be arrested under conspiracy charges. Alberto Niesman was found dead in an apparent suicide on January 18th. However, suspicions arose because of the nature of Niesman's investigation. He had been investigating whether President Fernandez had attempted to interfere with an investigation into the bombing of a Jewish center. Niesman believed Fernandez covered up a connection between the bombings and the Iranian government in exchange for oil. The lead investigator into Niesman's death stated that the file was found in the trash at Niesman's house. The day after his death, Niesman was scheduled to speak before Congress regarding his claims about Fernandez. The British Army has announced the creation of a new special forces unit that will counteract narratives on social media. The anti-media reports that a military spokesperson said the 77th Brigade will formally be established in April to meet the challenges of modern conflict and warfare. There will be 1,500 so-called Facebook warriors who will spread disinformation and propaganda across social media platforms. How much food is in your pantry right now? Could you feed your family for two weeks, one week? How about three days without any help? eFoods Direct is food security for whatever the future holds. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 1-800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. You've been listening to the Liberty Beat. Remember to question everything and always live free. The Total Losers Corpse contained no traces of drugs or alcohol, and a superstitious Delta Airlines adds busty mermaids to its plane noses. My friend, you look like you are in need of the world's finest internet news summaries. Please come in and warm yourself by the fire of knowledge. This is The Onion Week in Review. A new law passed in Colorado this week will allow residents with a doctor's prescription to purchase medicinal fireworks, saying that those in need of stargazers, firecrackers, and galleria highlights now need only obtain a doctor's prescription, state officials expressed hope that the law would ease the suffering of those in need of huge, dazzling explosions. And in this week's op-ed pages, a man notes that, like it or not, we all die, then get dug up and molested. In other news, white male privilege is squandered on a job at Best Buy, and a local TCBY has missed the past two logo changes. Well, that's it for now. Goodbyes are bittersweet, my love, so I'll only tell you, for more, keep checking TheOnion.com. This is The Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here to bring up whatever you'd like at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, you've got me, Ian. Cantwell. And Mark. And, of course, you can join us online. You can uh, get interactive. You can also call us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. So we ended the show last night with the latest on the Ross Ulbricht trial it was kind of the, the closing arguments day, and we didn't have enough time to really get through a story about both sides' closing arguments. And I thought we were going to continue that tonight. I figured maybe the jury was going to take a, a day or two to figure out the verdict in this case. I was hoping that that might happen on the, on the, you know, the slight chance that maybe the jury would have some sort of shred of humanity and you know not find him guilty on the kingpin charge but ross ulbricht the man accused of running the silk road has now been found guilty on apparently all of the counts that he was facing including the kingpin charge and the jury deliberations took all of two hours which is so weird because i totally thought his confession was going to get him off (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well yeah what you're referencing is he in the in through his attorney because he didn't actually ever talk during the trial which i think was a huge mistake but uh, through his attorney in the opening statements admitted to having programmed the silk road which for those of you who don't know is an underground drug marketplace and black marketplace you could buy fake ids hacking tools you could buy legal things too like books packing supplies uh things like that silk road was actually how i got introduced to nootropics the, oh. the smart drugs that i've been taking and like they actually were selling paracetam on there and paracetam is perfectly legal Perfect. okay but i i saw this on there and that was what led me to like find out about it they were like nootropics and i was like what is this and they explained it and i was like hmm that's a very interesting thing the silk road was an amazing website and uh, some of the folks in the courtroom apparently called out i've got a story about the uh, 
know, the guilty verdict here today from Wired.com's Andy Greenberg. Uh, so I definitely want to get into that. Plus, coming up, Mark, you want to talk about vaccines and net neutrality. Chris Cantwell is looming, it seems. Yeah, it's going to happen pretty soon. Tom Wheeler, the chairman of the FCC, released an op-ed today where he outlined what he envisions net neutrality to be and why he thinks it's important. I think that's complete slop. So our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. Andy Greenberg at Wired.com. A jury has spoken and the mask is off. Ross Ulbricht has been convicted of being the Dread Pirate Roberts, secret mastermind of the Silk Road online narcotics empire. On Wednesday, less than a month, that's today, uh, less than a month after his trial began in a downtown Manhattan courtroom, 30-year-old Ulbricht was convicted of all seven crimes he was charged with, including narcotics and money laundering conspiracies and a kingpin charge usually reserved for mafia dons and drug cartel leaders. Now, he doesn't mention for some reason the hacking charge. So as I understood it, it was conspiracy to commit hacking, conspiracy to uh, to sell drugs, and conspiracy to money launder plus the kingpin charge. So I had thought there were four. I would like to see what the seven charges were. Maybe he had two of certain counts i should have looked into the actual court paperwork because none of the coverage that i've read actually like outlines the statutes that he broke and i'm generally Mm -hmm. i'm a guy who's kind of interested in law and trying to figure out exactly what it is i mean we were just talking before the show began trying to understand he's facing a mandatory 30-year minimum and i don't understand like is that because of the kingpin charge or if that i believe it is because of the king just just based on what i recall seeing over covering this as deeply as we have been able to in the last several weeks weeks um i think the minimums on the other charges might have been 10 years but i i don't know about that i'm pretty sure i recall hearing 30 for the kingpin yeah so that's probably why they were i guess confessing and trying to avoid that one charge to avoid the big mandatory minimum they had planned on this guy going to prison for at least a decade yeah i'd like to hear what the defense attorney strategy was because ultimately we didn't get to see him put on his full case Considering the judge ruled against the defense in so many different instances throughout this case, yet there's an article over at ArsTechnica.com that claims Ross Ulbricht got a fair trial. I mean, that's, of course, ridiculous. Anybody that's looked at the the, uh, situations that have come up during this case knows that the defense got it they got screwed yeah it really judge. looked like it to me from the standpoint of the uh, the judge retaining uh, allowing the prosecution to retain its witness list until just you know a couple of days before the defense uh, that's shocking yeah it's shocking it's shocking it's absolutely shocking the de- defense being disallowed uh, b- certain uh, witnesses that they wanted like to have half of their witnesses right and uh, you know if you're going to send a man for, to prison for the rest of his life you need to give him some latitude there is when you talk about a fair trial the idea is, is that the defense and the the prosecution have it fair i don't even think it should be that way there's a presumption of innocence here and the defense should get a certain amount of leeway because we're talking you know the prosecutor's not going to go to prison at the end of this it'd be nice if the defense could also do closing statements last Apparently in federal court, and same thing's true in New Hampshire, where we're from, uh, where we're broadcasting from right now, that uh, you, as the prosecution, get the last word in a case. And that's not... Yeah, good. that's a huge that's a huge <laughs> thing. The one good thing I'll say about it though is that it I, I doubt it'll uh, amount to reversible error, but I imagine that we're going to see appeals on this for years to come. That is indeed the intention from what I understand. It took the jury apparently 3.5 hours. I'd heard initial reports of 2 hours, but either way that's, you know, a pittance of an amount of time. 3.5 hours to return a verdict. Ulbricht faces a minimum of 30 years in prison, maximum of life, but his legal team said it will appeal the decision, presuming the parents and folks who've supported freeross.org can continue to come up with whatever kind of ridiculous money these federal level attorneys are costing. I mean, I don't know what the numbers are, but from what I've heard, Derek's uh, Jay, uh, f- that our Monday night host, said that he thought that it was a million dollars for Whoa, their defense. Really? I don't know. Um, wow. But. You know, that there had been, didn't somebody donate a half a million dollars to his defense? I am not sure about that. I don't know the numbers. I don't know how much they've collected. I don't know what the attorney's charging, but I've gotten the impression that it is not very affordable. No, I imagine. I, I don't even think a million dollars sounds like a pretty big number for this particular case. It sounds to me like the prosecution certainly put a lot into it. I mean, they had, uh, you know, government agents traveling halfway across the planet to take down a server. They certainly put a lot of money into it. You had to imagine that in order to fight something like that, you're going to be spending big, big bucks. 
Man, I mean, it's just so shocking, especially considering the case, in my opinion, was lackluster. I mean, if this if this attorney was a million dollars, I wonder if Lynn Ulbricht, Ross's mom and his dad, whose name I don't know, um, I wonder if they're happy with the performance thus far. I mean, they must be if they're going on to appeal with the same attorneys. Well, do we know that they're using the same attorneys? We don't know. Okay. I said Because I would say, if I look, if, if <laughs> Lynn, if you're listening, don't, okay? Because this defense from the get-go, I was furious with these people. I mean, you start off with a confession. I'm yeah. sorry to tell you that when you're facing life imprisonment, probably not the best of ideas. And then you chase away people who are trying to do the the only possible way you get out of this, jury nullification. Not that it has such a great track record, but at least it it's something. a strategy. At yep. least it's a, it's at least it's an attempt to get out of this. And they just didn't seem to make any effort to do this whatsoever. He might as well have had a public defender for how <laughs> how badly he got sold down the river on this. So, you know, I almost uh, concur almost 100% with that. I mean, again, we don't know exactly what the strategy was. Maybe it was gutted by the judge, but I agree with you. Confessing right out of the gate, of course, was not a good idea. But then again, they did allegedly catch him red-handed, right? Logged into the website. I mean, there was certainly some pretty solid evidence, supposedly, if that, if you don't want to claim that all of the federal, federal evidence was faked by the feds. Like, oh, well, he wasn't logged in. It was a faked screenshot, you know, to go through that kind of uh, defense. Right, but Maybe I mean, like, these, this is the only way that you're going to do that, right? I mean, look, you're, you're in a situation where they absolutely have the guy dead to rights, you know? I mean, look, it was the same thing. Look, they had Rich Paul dead to rights, right? I mean, they yep. had him yeah, audio him video. and video recording of him making the sales. There's really no way around this. The, the only two ways you're doing this is is to either take a plea and and reduce your sentence in the process. He wasn't given a plea. Rich Paul was given a plea. Right. That's true. But it's either it's either pleaded out or you're going balls to the wall and you're going to and you're going to try to nullify a jury. You're going to say, "Yeah, I did it and here's why and that's why you should let me go." And for this guy to not even take the he stand he is should have sick. Done that. Huge mistake. And that's one of the things that defense attorneys will frequently advise against rich paul's attorney advised him against taking the stand and he went with it and she was persuasive 855 450 free but i think it was uh, the the key mistake in that trial and i think it was a key mistake uh in this trial as well 855 450 free more free talk live coming up share your thoughts when the leading antihistamine and nasacort go nose to nose nasacort wins stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms and when you stop more causes, you get 24-hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription-strength medicine available over-the-counter. Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour. Stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938, 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Phone records, financial and location data, Prism, Tempora, XKeyscore, Boundless Informant. 
Hey, y'all, Scott Horton here for OffNow.org. Now, here's the deal. Due to the Snowden revelations, we have a great opportunity for a short period of time to get some real rollback of the national surveillance state. Now, they're already trying to tire us by introducing fake reforms in the Congress. And the courts, they betray their sworn oaths to the Constitution and Bill of Rights again and again and can in no way be trusted to stop the abuses for us. We've got to do it ourselves. How? We nullify it at the state level. It's still not easy, but the Off Now project of the 10th Amendment Center has gotten off to a great start. I mean it. There's real reason to be optimistic here. They've gotten their model legislation introduced all over the place, in state after state. I've lost count. More than a dozen. You're always wondering, yeah, but what can we do? Here's something. Something important. Something that can work if we do the work. Get started cutting off the NSA support in your state. Go to offnow.org. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Thanks to Bitcoin, LRN.FM is able to provide our free-to-air satellite channel across North and Central America. You can listen to LRN.FM 24-7 via satellite for no monthly cost. Learn more about our satellite channel at sat.lrn.fm. And if you'd like to help us continue to expand, you can send us Bitcoins via the address you'll find under the Bitcoin graphic in the right column of LRN.FM. To learn more about Bitcoin, visit weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and that is Packet Loss. The uh, music dropping out like that. Uh, We are connected to our network via IP technology tonight, which means the public internet. And so therefore, uh, well, the music didn't sound very good there. Hopefully we're sounding all right back to the network. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Joining you tonight in studio, it's me, Ian. Cantwell. And Mark. We've got the story about Ross Ulbricht. He's been found guilty. It's sad, but also very expected. Uh, He was found guilty on all seven counts. I didn't even realize he was facing seven counts. I thought it was four. Um, But, you know, regardless, we have been following the case as it's been developing here on Free Talk Live. And there's, of course, a lot of aspects to this. There's an interview that came out uh, of Ross's mother, and this was before the verdict. So that might be worth sharing if we get the chance. But we're talking about some of the different aspects surrounding this case. You're certainly welcome to share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE or join us via Skype at username lrn.fm. Mark, we're going to Texas in a matter of weeks, and you could be there with us, you, the listener, if you love Bitcoin or maybe you're just curious about it and you want to learn a lot more. The Texas Bitcoin Conference is happening again. It's the second year for this amazing event, and it's going on at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin, Texas, March 28th and 29th. So it's coming up, but it's not too late to get your tickets. Keynote speakers will include world-famous investor and economist and author George Gilder, as well as IBM's architect of their blockchain technology, Adept. Sambala Nair will be flying in from India. David Johnston, Jason King, Robert Murphy, Vitalik Buterin, Charlie Shrem, somebody else who's recently been convicted in federal court, and many other speakers are still getting lined up. So go to TexasBitcoinConference.com to learn more about this uh, great event. We went last year, had a great time, broadcast live. We'll be doing that again this year. So we'll look forward to seeing you in Austin, March 28th and 29th. When you go to TexasBitcoinConference.com, use code FTL, and you'll get a $25 discount off the... Already fairly low price of 150 bucks for a ke- for a convention for a two day convention that's a good price as is knock off 25 bucks use code FTL plus another 25 bucks will go to Sean's Outpost which is uh, doing some great charity work for the homeless and they're doing it all with Bitcoin TexasBitcoinConference.com code FTL and again it's happening March 28th and 29th so uh, Ross Ulbricht he's likely going to prison maybe for as much as life, maybe for as few, as few as 30 years. What's the average murderer go to prison for? 
Uh, I would say that it is probably, I'd say it's about 10 to 15 years, be my guess. So at least it was at, at least it was at one point. Um, yeah. Now the, the sort of eighty five percent rule tends to be catching up. So he will be facing two to three times the time of somebody who actually who's actually taken someone's life. Yeah, That's, it's it's it it shows you their priorities, right? I mean, yeah. and and I noticed this. I mean, even when when I went to jail the first time. I wasn't. I didn't go to jail for being a good guy, right? Like I wasn't mm-hmm. like a, an activist who was standing up for his beliefs. I mean, I I went to jail on um, theft and weapons and and drunk driving charges and whatnot. And I spent more time in jail for possessing a stun gun and sleeping in my car <laughs> than I did for you know thefts and assaults and all all types of crazy terrible things that I was involved in. And it just shows you the priorities of it. But and I. You know, you can't really predict what's going to happen on sentencing, which is going to be May. I believe mid-May is when the sentencing date is, the 15th perhaps, but I don't have it in front of me. Uh, the judge there, she's been absolutely awful throughout the case thus far. I don't think people should even get their hopes up for 30 years. I, yeah, really don't. I would say that uh, with all of the gusto that has been put into this case, the oh, likelihood yeah. of a minimum sentence is ex- ex- exceedingly unlikely yeah. that she's going to be like, well, I really don't want to send you to prison, but the law mandates me to sentence uh-uh. you to 30 years. So that's how long you're going to go for. No, this woman has done everything in her power to set this case up, to sell this guy down the river. And to enhance her political career. Exactly. Exactly. Well. She's going to go there and, you know, exactly. So th- this is a big thing for her, right? She presided over this, this what what is perceived to be the future, right? The, the, the This is one of the greatest criminals the world has ever known. As far as they're concerned, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, I don't think he's committed a crime, but, you know, the legal definition of crime is something that they've made illegal. Right. He, right? he definitely, you know, he's certainly uh, made a lot more money than most drug dealers do. He mm-hmm. certainly uh, was able to continue in his his life of crime for a quote unquote crime for a lot longer than than the vast majority of drug dealers out there and so i you know people end up spending decades in prison for slinging a bag of cocaine on a sidewalk in harlem you know that a guy who managed to evade law enforcement so long to to have federal authorities on this huge chase going after him uh his server in a whole nother country and emerging technologies and everything else they have put an awful lot in to this and they are going to take an awful lot out of ross ulbricht i have a feeling that your predictions are accurate mark what do you think i'm going to go for 30 years i think really they, yeah um I why think, i think that they're going to look obviously i was going to tell you that uh i think they're going to look more magnanimous he's a young man um, why would they want to look magnanimous go ahead um because to some extent you know people can see themselves in ross he's a good-looking guy he's, but he's a white. murderer according to the feds they haven't convicted him on that at all. That doesn't matter. You don't think that weighed on the, the conscience of the jurors? That was the intention of bringing that up, right? I believe it was the intention of uh, bringing it up, but, uh, you know, they... All the murderers were a nice guy beforehand, right? The neighbors always say, he was such a nice guy. Oh, well, uh, really, you. it's too bad he wasn't charged with murder. He'd have been out of prison sooner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's sick. Maybe that's true. Um, I'm sorry, I, I interrupted your... That, that, that's just my assertion. You know, I'm just, I'm going to take a swing out of here. think they're going the nice, nice route. I think this. that they cheated every single step of the way i think they know they cheated and i think that they have a they're gonna have a small pang of guilt over that <laughs> oh, I, God. I, I hope you're right I'm but i mean can't well on I, this I, one i, I don't think want to. if they were going to uh you know find some uh some humanity in themselves that they had it's plenty of time to do that yeah. and now they're like oh well now that we totally no. set you up and ruined they everything send about you the message that's what it's gonna be you know, oh, well, you know, you might have committed those murders, but regardless, you've created a way for people to get drugs. And there are people who have purchased drugs from your site that had never drun- done drugs before. You've destroyed humanity, and we're going to send you to the bowels and the pits of the worst federal penitentiary Let of me all ask time you this. to teach you and everybody else watching a lesson. So you guys are taking life. I'm taking 30 years, right? Is that correct? I'm more likely to go for life, maybe not quite, maybe it won't be life, maybe it'll be 60 years and he'll be 
Okay, so where do, years at old what point do out. I win? If it's 60 years, do I get uh, 45 years and down and you get 46 years and I'll up? I'll take life gonna, if I have gonna, to take We're one. betting okay. we're going to do the over-under here. Well, like, I'm just do, saying that— Do we uh, clear the spread? <laughs> 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 I, I, well, you know, I mean, like, who gets—if if we're going to make predictions here, somebody has to be right and somebody has to be wrong. I— yeah, I don't definitely. I definitely don't want to gamble on uh, what Ross is. Uh, what's going to happen to him? But I, I'm. I think I'm going to side I, with. I, 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 can't should, I should totally gamble on this, right? Because I'm a terrible gambler. I, if I, I'll <laughs> totally bet on him getting life imprisonment, and that just on that chance. fact alone, he, he won't, won't get, get it. <laughs> <laughs> right, good, good. Well, I'm first willing to bet that Ross is going to be sentenced. So therefore, we just we're just picking what the sentence is, right? Like that's, that's not, correct. I'm not. There's dancing. no way he's going to avoid sentencing unless he dies. I'm not dancing on the guy's grave. Um, if you know, no, by I, and large, what do you think? He, what I think he did, you know, doesn't seem like that terrible a thing. Setting up an online drug marketplace. He did a heroic thing, and in fact, the audience of the court basically said so on the way out the door today. I'll tell you a little bit about that coming up here. 855 450 free. They broke their silence after the sentencing. It's Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Worried about getting sick and feeling terrible for days or even weeks? You need Immudine for a healthy immune system. Why get sick and bother with products that just don't work? For just a dollar a day, Immudine is all natural and safe for all lifestyles. Call 866-257-8668 to buy now before it's too late, before you get sick. Or go to immudyne.com, immudine.com, or call 866-257-8668. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a free, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of 
kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may take control of the airwaves toll-free at 855-450-FREE or Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. You'll sound a lot better, usually, if you're on Skype. We're going to get to your calls coming up. We're talking about Ross Ulbricht and his guilty verdict today. Guilty on all counts. The jury deliberated for all of three and a half hours, which is really nothing. I'm, I'm wondering if there was even anyone who was dissenting in the first vote. Uh, presumably there must have been to make it three and a half hours, but I don't know what that— it, would always, it always fascinates me to know what would go on in a jury deliberation room, and that's something that I've never experienced. Yeah, I think uh, what, what, I, what I'm guessing is that they started off with a vote, you know, Guilty on this charge, guilty. Or, you know, do, how do you find on each charge, right? Yeah, so they probably, probably found him guilty from the gate on all of the charges, and but there they may just have, have been through them. some deliberation on the uh, on the kingpin charge. Maybe, maybe. so. Yeah. Maybe there was some question as to because I mean that was the entire point of the defense. It seems to say, hey, we did all of this other stuff. Find him not guilty on the kingpin. So as they go through seven charges, they're guilty on six of them, and maybe one or two people are at first like, well, let's have a conversation about this kingpin He's thing. a monster. He murdered people. That's what they would say. Or Could something. be. Express Coins, the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies, whether those cryptocurrencies are Bitcoin or Litecoin or Dogecoin. They actually have a couple of others over there at ExpressCoin.com. It's fast, safe, easy, inexpensive. They're a money services business um, licensed by the United States government, so they're good there. You get your cryptocurrencies with a money order, a check, or a wire transfer, whatever's easiest for you. Just start off at ExpressCoin.com. Whether in the U.S. or Canada, it's ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading the app that they have over at ExpressCoin.com. You use coupon code FTL when you uh, get $40 worth of uh, your cryptocurrency at no fee at all. So... What you do is you go to ExpressCoin.com, you purchase left, less than $40 worth of your, whatever your cryptocurrency is, you use coupon code FTL, and you'll get it with for no fee at all. ExpressCoin.com. As a matter of fact, uh, there's going to be a new, easy, even easier, even faster way, I should say faster, it's certainly faster way of uh, getting your Bitcoins through ExpressCoin coming out very, Whoa. very soon, I am told. Ooh, that sounds tantalizing. Yep. Because they do good work there. They do. They really do. ExpressCoin.com. Let's go. You're not even going to tell us what the new, easier way is? I can't, know. No. You're we just going to have yet. to go to ExpressCoin.com to find out. Well, it's not ready yet. Oh. You'll have to be patient, and we'll let you know when that happens. Liberty Phoenix is with us on Skype. Liberty Phoenix, go ahead. First and foremost, Mark, you're a dirty tease. Second off. Yes, I am. Gentlemen, can you say kangaroo court? This trial has been nothing but a bigger joke than the idea of military intelligence from the onset. The first off, they, they held the man for 15 months without taking him to trial. That's ridiculous. Second off, mm. they refused to even allow activists to try and you know persuade the jurors through nonviolent, peaceful negotiations. Good point. They threatened the jury uh, to, well, they, the jury never knew they were threatened, but they threatened the jury essentially to the rest of the courtroom saying that if the activists continued to do outreach out in front of the court, courthouse uh that the jury would become sequestered and they would make them private which would essentially mean the jury would think that they were being targeted by some crazed drug lord yeah the and second off the this judge the idea that this woman has been impartial is a joke this woman has done nothing but stonewall the defense at every chance she could get. She's done nothing but throw biscuits and bones and cater to the prosecution, as, you know, obviously is her job, considering she's nothing but a mandated servant for the state. This, this, this is ridiculous. This is outrageous. And, it's, and in my opinion, it's nothing but a, you know, another of many messages to free and independent human beings. That's to say, sit down, slave, shut up and do what you're told or we're going to hurt you. If people can't see that, then they're just blind, which sadly I, I'm, I'm starting to have a lot of doubts that anybody even cares 
about the slavery that they're that they're living under. This yeah, has been very few people. Yeah, it's it's are aware it's a thing it. that the vast majority of people out there just look at Ross Ulbricht as another drug dealer. Just mm-hmm. hey, you're a bad guy. You you went out to uh, to make a buck at the expense of your fellow man suffering, and thus uh, we we are quite enthusiastic to see you go to prison, and we don't much care what the state does to you in the course of getting you in there. And I mean, again, of course, once you confess to doing that, then it's even more difficult to garner any sort of sympathy. Because yeah. there's no question in their minds that you had done it. Yeah, and the fact is, you know, when Rich Paul, our friend, who is our uh, Tuesday night co-host, when he was convicted of selling marijuana, there was also a purported LSD charge in there, which I'm sure didn't help him uh, with the jury. I mean, it's hard enough to break a jury out of its sort of uh, stupor. I don't know what the right word is for the uh, being doped up by the state and the fear of kind of being in the the courthouse. And when the when Rich was found guilty afterwards, I did kind of confront the jury outside, asking them why they did what they did. Why didn't they nullify? And essentially, it sounded like they were afraid to do that. They thought it would be breaking the law to to nullify. And I'm sure the LSD charge didn't help. But it's hard to break people out of their stupor. Well, yeah, and in, and in Rich's case, of all things, I mean, you had the the states own expert witness confirming that what rich sold was not lsd that That's it true. was in fact 2ci it was a legal chemical and that rich had never said here buy lsd he said acid he said acid so yeah. the 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 thing in that case which really like drove home for me the just the futility of jury nullification in large part is that these people will find you guilty of a crime that the state tells them you're not guilty of committing right you're saying hey i did this don't find me guilty anyway the state is saying he we're charging him with this which is not what he had done that's right and you're gonna find him guilty anyway and sure enough they did it and i mean that i imagine i don't know exactly what the breakdown of the years rich was facing was a hundred yeah I, I mean i don't know exactly what um each charge carried right but i uh, imagine that the purported lsd charge was probably a, a bulk of it if not the bulk i of don't it. recall and so, you know, this is one of these things that, like, you think you, – you you look at a case like, like Rich's and you're saying to yourself, well, they're obviously going to find him not guilty of this one thing, right? Because he didn't even actually do it. The state's own witness is going to confirm that he didn't do it. And by the way, what he did do, they're going to confirm was completely legal. But – of yeah, course, found they, anyway. they they found and, him guilty just because they told him to. And the same thing's true of the Bartholomew brothers out in California who were arrested for holding a taxes equal theft sign while wearing V masks, V for vendetta masks. And they were arrested for that. The jury ended up convicting them of a charge that they were clearly not guilty of. And they even admitted that. And the jury actually, jury members actually in interviews admitted that they found him guilty because they, or they found them guilty because they disobeyed the police. <laughs> they actually it, admitted that, even though what they did, they, like they had no legal obligation to do with uh, to do what the police said. Right? They didn't. They were not f- found guilty by any fact of the matter, you know, by right. any of the statutes. We just, just wanted to go above and beyond and really do our jobs well. You know what they need to do is they essentially need to, the re- sorry. It's essentially the reverse of jury nullification. Right? I don't, maybe there should be a word for that. I, it's not coming to me immediately. But what would that be? What is the opposite of jury nullification, where the jury just finds you guilty anyway, despite the facts? <laughs> It is jury nullification. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not jury nullification is, because they're not is. nullifying the, the law. The jury is nullifying the law. The <laughs> law is you go free, and they're going to nullify it and send you to prison anyway. Hmm. So, um, Sorry, Liberty, Liberty Phoenix is still with us. Well, here. we'll talk to him in yeah. a second. Um, in in uh, the Judge Dredd comic books, there's been a couple of movies out. One of them I famously with uh, Sly Stallone, but the other one, the one that came later, was better. Hmm. Um, anyway... In that movie, basically what they've done is is they've eliminated cops and just made law enforcement officers judges. Judge, jury, and executioner, right? Judge, jury, and executioner. So, But, I mean, you know, they could potentially, if assuming that they sentenced to somebody death, to death, they could kill them that way. But mostly they send them to the ISO cubes. Um, and obviously it's a dystopian future. Mm-hmm. The idea that you'd stick somebody in an ISO cube for 30 years or something like that's insane. But, you know, the world has gone insane, and this is the best way to handle it is, is you know, who cares if you break uh, a half a dozen eggs as long as you manage to get, uh, you know, to pick a couple of pieces out to eat or whatever it is. I don't know what the, the analogy is, but that's a, that's basically what we're moving towards here is, is a, a situation where the executive just decides what sentences are and, um, you know, just mm-hmm. rams it forward. Phoenix, your thoughts? You know. Phoenix? Hello? 
<laughs> Some kind of audio problem, apparently. Thanks, thanks for calling it could in. Have been, it could have been an audio problem. We'll see if we can clear that up here in a moment. Every now and then, the sound card just dies, and I apologize for that. Apparently, it's actually a bug with the sound card software. 855-450. What is this, some garbage free. podcast? It might as well be. 855-450-3733, just without all the profanity. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800 691 6129. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. If you're David, a few well-chosen words can help level the playing field with Goliath. I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com. Recently, I saw a Yellow Pages ad for an appliance repair company, and the headline read, Why Wait for Sears? If you're going to the Yellow Pages, the Dead Sea Scrolls of Advertising, you're ready to buy right now. So this is an attention-grabbing message. And how about the plumber whose radio ad says, Call by noon Thursday, and we'll be there Saturday at no extra cost. Smart guy. Most plumbing firms give their crew the weekend off. This one gives them Sunday and Monday off. In the words of a respected advertising executive, cut to the chase, make it quick, and tell me exactly what you can do for me, especially if you're looking for work. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest Liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free. You can also call on Skype. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Skype username is LRN.FM. With you in studio tonight, it's me, Ian. Cantwell. And Mark. We've been discussing the Ross Ulbricht trial. He has been found guilty by the jury on 
all counts. It took him about three and a half hours to do it. And sentencing is coming up in the middle of May. He may be facing as few as 30 years in prison and as much as life. Uh, the predictions from show hosts thus far, Chris Cantwell saying life. Yep. Mark, you're saying 30 years. I'm going to throw in on life. I think they want to try to set an example, uh, send a message, be real tough, because that's the way the federal government plays things. They are not nicey nice folks. What What's the effective difference between these two sentences? I don't. I wouldn't say that there's a, a terribly great amount of difference, right? I mean, you, the guy's thirty years old. He's if he goes, he, he, you're you're t- you're literally, it, literally, if he gets sentenced to thirty years, he's thirty years old. You're literally sentencing him to as long as he has his, been alive, life, right? Yeah. That is a life sentence, and they're going to get out of prison when you're what, 60, sixty years old? You're a computer programmer, as you're like, you're going to get out of prison when you're sixty. You're not even going to recognize the technology. Imagine mm-hmm. you went to prison thirty years ago and you got out today and you're like what's an ipad i mean it's it's impossible it's hard to imagine to it. recover from something like that liberty phoenix is back with us we did have technical difficulties earlier and those have been solved for the moment go ahead phoenix you know guys i would give this last shout out to the listening audience if you're as frustrated and as disgusted with this entire system as as i am get yourself to new hampshire get take yourself to grafton start there Flood that place with a few hundred people. Free that town. Free the state. Help New Hampshire secede and get away. Find some solace, some escape from the clutches of these vile authoritarian pieces of garbage. Hey, Phoenix, weren't you supposed to move up here soon? Like, what's your ETA? Um, I am coming up for Liberty Forum. Mm-hmm. I'm. I don't think I can move completely. Um, I can't. I just can't leave my girls for any, for eight months, was, mm-hmm. which was my original plan. Um, so I'm planning on coming up from Liberty Forum to Porkfest, and then I'll come back to Illinois after Porkfest. That's going to be a hard, <laughs> that's going to be a hard go back, man, after you, yeah. you've been gone for so long. What do they say that Shire time is like twice as long as, uh, as uh, regular time? Years, one year, yeah. Yeah. So hey. hopefully I'll, I'll come up, I'll get my Liberty Boot Camp, I'll figure out how to properly communicate the ideas of, of freedom and, and, and liberty, because I'm far too aggressive and far too... Well, you're in a scary place. I mean, you're in Illinois, yeah. which is one of the worst places to be, like to do a cop block or something like that. It also yeah. sounds like uh, this Albrecht trial may have been your straw that broke the camel's back uh, situation for you. I mean, I can just hear, I can hear the upset in your voice. Um, for me, it was the... Uh, uh, what was what was the name of that? Uh, You're talking about the Kilo Seven the Kilo, case yeah, in New London, Connecticut. New London versus Kilo case back in I don't know 2006 or something. Thanks, Phoenix. It's, it's go oh, go ahead. Straw. Sorry, there's not enough straws, Mark. I mean, every single day, if if somebody gets a parking ticket, that's another broken straw. Any time that the state in in influences their own will on any free, independent, beautiful human being, I'm taking a piece out of Kokesh's book. It it, it is a travesty and an embarrassment to society. Thanks, Phoenix. Thanks. Appreciate the call tonight uh, from Illinois. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Great place to leave to come to New Hampshire. I do like his solution. I, I love mean, that. Great place to leave, Illinois. <laughs> right. I mean, so same thing's true of New York and certainly. many other places, as a matter of fact. But Illinois is certainly one of the worst ones. And I, I actually found out, I, I sort of dig, I was digging through my data the other day, and I actually have uh, a lot of readers from Illinois. I imagine, mm. I, I'm like, why the hell are you people still there? That just seems like total insanity. There's so many reasons. Family job career i mean people house. feel tied down a house business i mean unfortunately we're not going to be able to persuade the majority of libertarians i mean i don't even know if we can get five percent of libertarian types to move to new hampshire you have to be a real outstanding uh kind of doer person to really get to get up here and i'm not saying liberty phoenix isn't that he's coming here which is awesome yeah. uh, even if you can come here for part of the year It'll be worth your while, in my Certainly. opinion, because, I mean, even if you just look at it as like a recharge, if you're living in some statist hellhole and you can come to be in New Hampshire to be around people who love freedom, if it's just for the Liberty Forum or Pork Fest, it's nice. But if it's for six months, eight months, that's amazing. Three months, well, you're going to have a great time. I wouldn't want to bill New Hampshire as, uh, you know, like this incredibly free place. It's- Did I? marginally freer. Well, you said you're recharging your batteries. It's a lot That's freer about being than Illinois. People. I mean, okay. Well, it is a lot freer. Illinois is ranked in like in the bottom uh, five worst, uh, least free states in in the union. I New didn't, I didn't want to in the top five. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Suggest I, it was free. I just I just want to make the point and and you know that it really is about being around people that agree with you. And there's an incredible amount yeah. of people here that are like that. Um, so. 
and, and we're getting momentum. We're moving in the right direction. But it's going to take. It's the, the the motto is liberty in our lifetime, and by all evidence, it's going to take that long. Well, and especially if he's talking about going out to Grafton too, which you know Grafton is not the middle of nowhere. It's the middle of nowhere, but at the same time, I think Grafton has one cop, and he's right. and he's like popularly elected, and there's like a couple of pe- hundred people who vote in that election, right? And, and there are a number of liberty people there, and they are trolling hard out in Grafton. They are and it's and, awesome, and it's like and and it's. You know, they're sort of like, I guess, a little different ideologically than me. It's it's sort of sovereign citizeny, if you will, as opposed to like more voluntary. I don't know. It's hard to get a real vibe for what goes on in Grafton because there's not a whole lot of reporting that goes on there. Right. And I know one of the characters who's involved, and he's definitely not a sovereign citizen type. He's uh, it's Weta Claus, uh, you know, right. Bob Constantine, who we've talked to before in the past on uh, Free Talk Live about his civil disobedience. And uh, and actually where he tried to use jury nullification as well. So it's, it's kind of a related case. But uh, they're doing some amazing trolling out there. I actually wrote about it over at freekeen.com earlier uh, within the last few days. And if you want to go learn more, please do. But I had to rely on the opposition. There's a website called Miscellany Blue, which is a lefty, one, it's a lefty yeah. blog here in New Hampshire. It's not very well read or anything like that. But their blog author took the time to read over some NH Underground forums and extract quotes about what the activists were doing and made an article about it. It was nice. I didn't have to do any research. I mean, he'd kind of already done the work for me. Yeah, I had gone out there. I was invited to speak. They do annually. They, they in Grafton. Do, uh, yeah. So in Grafton, they do Burning Porcupine every year, yeah. and they asked me to come out there and talk, and I and I did and uh it was it was a blast it was a great time and but at the same time there was sort of like it it was very interesting to hear them tell me about all the things that they were doing because they are a very active group but as you said there's next to nothing coming out of their media wise which is just insane to me because it sounds to me from the from the descriptions i'm getting from what they're telling me about what they've done i'm like how is there not hours and hours of amazing youtube footage from this just get a camera dude come on it's really sad i mean i did invite uh one of the folks from out there to blog over at Free Keen, and I did that recently, so I'm hoping to hear back from him, and maybe we'll be able to actually have someone in Grafton at the very least write something uh, about what happened, and uh, we'll get to pictures eventually, hopefully. Yeah. I, I hear Grafton has internet these days. Yeah. So, uh, anyway. Well, I think what's happening in Grafton's exciting. Uh, what they're managing, basically, of the places in New Hampshire— Do so you support trolling the system? Because they're totally trolling them in. in well, Grafton. I think that they're trying to get what they want to get, yeah. and there's a variety of different ways. They're of not doing sugarcoating that. it, though. You know what I mean? What they're doing is is they're attempting to basically get enough people in uh, you know town to be able to do something, and we have to have that happen. We have to get a situation where essentially you get just enough people to vote on vote for what you want, and to see how that goes. Because I know the state's going to tell them to go pound sand once they manage to vote in whatever it is, whatever you know, new rules or lack of rules that they want to vote in. But it's just the craziest thing in the world because like 125 people could elect me. <laughs> right? As like the city's only police officer. I mean, what kind of crazy world would that be? They've submitted 20, Indeed. 20 petition warrant articles. And in New Hampshire, what that means is in a town, you can submit uh, basically whatever you want to appear on the ballot. And then people vote on it. Now, if it's similar to what happens with the school boards, and I believe it is, those warrant articles can be adjusted by the people that attend these town meetings as well. Uh, now, so you know, it's not going to necessarily end up the way they're proposing that it will, but the proposals are that they reduce the town's operating budget by 10% for the next three years, eliminate taxpayer funding for the public library, and slash the police department budget to $10,000. I wonder what you could do. You know Khan Academy Online? This is a uh, YouTube channel that basically will teach kids anything from the very basic of math on up to calculus. Um, and You said Khan Academy. I thought they were going to teach them how to pick locks. <laughs> <laughs> not ex-Khan Academy. Um, <laughs> No, they, uh, you know, this is, they, they, they handle all aspects of, of education, academia, and, you know, go from the, the lowest to the highest uh, sort of uh, command of it. But I would wonder what would happen if you would just go ahead and say, we have decided to replace our public school with Khan Academy. 
I, in New giving, Hampshire, I don't think you can, right? They say, like, it's constitutionally required. That it's the, constitutional in 49 states, absolutely mentioned in the Constitution. New Hampshire is the only state in the union where they do not specifically say that a, that education is, um, you know, a the right. the court ruled. The, right? In the Claremont decision in, I think, 98 or so thereabouts, in the 90s, they ruled that, that the cherishing education was, in fact, a constitutional mandate. But that can be overturned because we're not talking about changing— you're talking about changing a ruling. You're not talking about changing the Constitution. Hmm. 855 450 free. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, February 4th, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.40 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,270 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $227. Antiwar.com reports ongoing negotiations between Iran and the P5 plus one seems to be nearing a major breakthrough with reports that the U.S. and Iranian officials are discussing a compromise that would remove a major obstacle from the deal. The compromise centers on the centrifuges and would have the U.S. agreeing Iran gets to keep its civilian enrichment program in return for Iran reconfiguring its centrifuges to be much less efficient. Though officials aren't saying how close this compromise is to being finalized, the specificity of the plan suggests it's pretty far through the negotiating phase, more so than any previous reports. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani says that the gap between the two sides are getting much narrower and that he believes that a nuclear deal is getting closer to being finalized. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
The Wall Street Journal reports federal prosecutors allege Ross Ulbricht was the dread pirate Roberts, the criminal mastermind running the secret online drug marketplace Silk Road. Now it's time to see if the jury agrees with the prosecution. Ulbricht's trial in a New York federal courtroom has painted conflicting portraits of the 30-year-old who faces potential life in prison for alleged crimes relating to his alleged operation of Silk Road. Prosecutors say he was a power-hungry kingpin who used threats of violence and murder to protect his drug empire on the internet. Ulbricht's lawyers say he was the site's peaceful and innocent creator who was framed by the real villains. In the trial's closing arguments on Tuesday, prosecutors accused Ulbricht of setting up the Silk Road from the start as a way to sell illegal drugs. They say he was the real-world identity of Dread Pirate Roberts, the online pseudonym used by the top boss on Silk Road. Ulbricht's lawyers conceded early on in the trial that he created Silk Road, but they said he handed it off to others after a few months and was lured back to take the fall. Joshua Dreytel, Ulbricht's lawyer, told jurors that they should discredit all of the government's digital evidence because it could have been manufactured by someone else to frame Ulbricht. The jury will begin deliberating Wednesday morning. ExpressCoin is the best choice for buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. ExpressCoin prides themselves on their customer service, so much so that the back end on the website should allow them to be even more focused on your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or cash deposit. Get started at expresscoin.fppradio.com. That's expresscoin.fppradio.com. Reuters reports credit rating firm Standard & Poor's will pay $1.5 billion to resolve a collection of lawsuits over its ratings on mortgage securities that soured in the run-up to the 2008 financial crisis, concluding one of the U.S. government's most ambitious cases tied to the housing collapse. The settlement comes after more than two years of litigation as the S&P tried to beat back allegations that it issued overly rosy ratings in order to win more business. S&P parent McGraw-Hill Financial Incorporated said that it will pay $687.5 million to the U.S. Department of Justice and $687.5 million to 19 states and the District of Columbia, which had filed suits over the ratings. The United States government sued S&P in 2013 after initial settlement talks broke down, seeking $5 billion and accusing the ratings firm of defrauding investors. S&P argued that its ratings were protected under the First Amendment right to free speech and described the lawsuit as retaliation for the firm downgrading the credit rating of the United States government. Authorities said the payout from S&P exceeds the company's profits earned for rating mortgage-backed securities from 2002 to 2007. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. In addition to creating a Twitter account, Pope Benedict XVI plans to further connect with Christian youth by giving up on Catholicism. Quote, in order to really relate to modern teens, he needs to make religion a much smaller part of his busy life, just like they do. And it's already working. Tweets like, can someone go to church for me, LOL, hashtag sleeping in, have been retweeted over a million times by lazy Catholic teens, while tweets like, if God was real, how come there's so much murder, and I'm still Catholic, I just don't go to church or believe in Jesus have been especially successful with college students who are questioning the church's teaching. It's really cool to see that the Pope is as active on social media and as skeptical about God as I am. Look, he just tweeted, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. That's totally how I feel. Pope Benedict's aides say his next project involves reaching out to Muslims by sitting down with Islamic leaders and proclaiming his undying allegiance to Allah. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, you can dial in toll-free and bring up anything that you like. 855-450-FREE is the number. That's 855-450-3733. We also invite you to call in on Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. Perhaps you're an international listener. Now, even if you're not international, Skype's nice because you sound better. But if you are international, then you save a lot of money. Uh, well, actually, I guess 
Would it cost money to call a toll-free number from another country? You, yes. can't, you can't even make the call. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that a, an 855 number, I think you can only call from the United States or Canada. I don't even think you can call from Europe. That's that probably number. true. Yeah. So it's the only way, then, in that case, for international listeners to reach us. Uh, so Skype username is lrn.fm. We've got more to say about Ross Ulbricht, plus net neutrality, vaccines. That's all on the way here tonight. Uh, if we get the chance, of course, you, you can also call in about anything you'd like to discuss. And we have Akko with us calling from Cameroon, Africa, in Bamenda. Go ahead, Akko. Yeah, hello, Ian. How are you guys? How are you doing today? Hey, it's great to have you uh, back on the show. It's 2 in the morning uh, where you are. So uh, what did you want to share with our listeners tonight, Akko? Oh uh, yes. Uh, last time I was on the show, I talked to you of corruption in Cameroon, of how I went to do a passport and they were asking me money behind the door. Right, so you were today, paying bribes, which is expected. Yes, I had to. I, I had to pay five thousand francs, equivalent to ten dollars, in order for me to pro process the the passport. Right, because uh, one of our listeners and uh, behind-the-scenes uh, guys here on the show, James, who's great and just a super early mover for the Free State Project, uh, he has helped you out. He's contacted you and has uh, kind of helped you out financially to put the passport application in there in Cameroon, and you did that. And that's what you had called about last time, was explaining sort of the process of paying bribes in order to get this to happen. And if I recall correctly, what you explained to us last time was that they did not give you a receipt at the time, and they said, yes. oh, just yes. come on back in a couple of weeks, and we'll give you the receipt then. <laughs> and you expected that you might have to pay another bribe when you came back just to get the receipt. So what's the latest? Yes, that is how Cameroon is very bureaucratic. They, they cannot save you just once. If they have to issue something and give it to you, they will start telling you, go and come back, go and come back, because they want to extract <laughs> some money from your pocket. Every so time. So last time... Yeah, and how long does time, it take you to get to these offices? I mean, you, this is quite a bit of travel. 40 kilometers. Yes, it is about 40 kilometers from my hometown. I have to travel 40 kilometers. How long does that take you, though? I mean, you don't have your own car. Yeah, the road is very bad. It takes me one hour, 30 minutes to two hours to get there. The road is so bad, which is just 40 kilometers, something that should not be above 30 minutes drive. Right. And plus the fact that it's uh, it's at some it's that the schedule of the bus whenever the bus leaves it's mm -hmm. not like you get to schedule it when it's convenient for you during your day does it take you basically all day to do the job then? Sometimes it may take me the whole day because I have to go to the travel agency and wait until the bus get full before we we leave. If mm -hmm. if there are no passengers then we'll have to wait. It may take us the whole day. Wow. So you uh, you went back to Bamenda uh, to, to presumably to follow up on the passport, right? Yes, I went to uh, to to take uh, the pass the receipt of the passport as they scheduled as they asked me to come one week later on. As I went there today, they were trying to walk up and down. They seem to be very busy in the office, absolutely doing nothing, simply because they also wanted to extract for money for me. But today I stood on my ground and I said no until they gave me the receipt, and here I am with it. I even have a copy of it. I've sent it to you. So wait, you said no to what? I'm sorry, I missed that, missed that point. Yes. Uh, they wanted me to give uh, some money to them in order to, for them to issue the receipt and give it to me, but I resisted. You did. That, they actually that, gave you the receipt even though you didn't hand over that particular extraction? Yes. Today I had to stand my ground. Today I, I had to show to tell them that I am a libertarian. I, I know my rights. I, I cannot stand this rubbish. I am tired of this injustice. And finally they gave it to me. And you actually did send, uh, was that what the picture was that you sent me over Skype? The yes, I will send it to you through Facebook. Skype seems to be very slow here. No, I did get it. I did get it on uh, on Skype. Well, congratulations. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that it uh, that it worked and you didn't. Uh, what what happens in Cameroon if for, for I mean, not that many people likely have the level of technology to do this, but if you happen to have a camera uh, on you and uh, w would they arrest you for pulling out a camera and recording an interaction with a government worker?
it, absolutely they will arrest me but if i have a camera i will have to do it secretly i will do it such that they will not know that i am i am i am taping what i'm videotaping well, they what really they get I mad about love that stuff to get this guy some yes, hidden yeah, cameras they get very much, they don't, i i would but it, all i want to do is get akko out of cameroon um and you know whatever yeah. it takes to you know, like we know that government's corrupt, but the, I don't the, want Akko to end up in a Cameroon prison. Yeah, yeah. I, I, one, one a of Cameroon the, prison um, might be the good option in there. I mean, he might just end up dead. Yeah, yeah. It, as we've we've uh, yeah. discussed a couple of times, I've been taking from Wednesday nights when we when I'm on the show, I take YouTube clips out and I had That's I right. had released uh, I I titled the video <laughs> "Escaping Cameroon" and and put that out. And uh, thank you for that. A, lo a lot of people were were actually pretty interested in in the story. Um, and we're in interested, story, in, yeah. yeah, and and interested in in helping them out. So I mean, if there's uh, some contact information that uh, we want to get from you know, off the air or something like that, maybe we'll put that. Yeah, out I've got there. a Skype here, and okay. uh, I can hook you up with him. Yeah, we'll sure. we'll discuss uh, that yes. later. Uh, I think with regard to my information, Ian has everything. If Ian yeah. has my name. So I you would be arrested though if you pulled out a camera, you'd be arrested. But I can tell you that even here in New Hampshire, Akko, it is illegal for us to surreptitiously record uh, the government bureaucrats and or anybody. You can't surreptitiously record. You can't secret, but, secretly record. But, 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 but Ian, there is one thing. Here I am an activist. I don't, I don't have to be afraid of them. I don't have to shy away from them. I will go straight into their face and tell them what they are doing is wrong. Many people here tell me that they are afraid that I will go to jail, but I don't care. I, I have to fight and stand Incredible. to change this country. If not, who are those who are going to change it? We are the youth. We are the very young people. We have to use our energy and energize this process of activism to bring about change. Because I, what I've realized about Cameroonians is that more than 80% of Cameroonians are all drunkards. They, when they come <laughs> from work, they, they go to the bar. Imagine somebody taking about 80%. 80 bottles of beer. Yes. That's Take because they don't have anything to live for. Right. I mean, they've got yes. a terrible uh, dictator who's been in charge for over 30 years. And as you pointed out, the this guy's extracting all kinds of whatever piddly amounts of wealth are being allowed to be created. He's extracting it from them. You can't create opportunity for yourself in uh, in Cameroon. And uh, so people are drinking themselves to death. I would I would just rewind a little bit. I mean, when you're talking, Akko, about um, you don't care if you go to jail. I would encourage you to care very deeply about going to jail. I care if you go to jail. I care if you go to jail, <laughs> especially if you're if you're trying to escape Cameroon. If you're interested in coming to the United States, it's not going to be very easy if you're locked up. So I admire your bravery, and I appreciate I totally that you're willing. Yeah. I, I I really I think it's great what you're doing, but I would. Uh, encourage you to exercise some level of caution because it doesn't i don't imagine that look jails are no picnic here in the united states i don't imagine that they are uh improving a great deal no, no, when you jail, get over to central africa <laughs> yeah yeah the jail West conditions africa. here are, are worse are something is something that you cannot even think about the, our jails here are very broken People that are in, in jail are like people who are rejected, people who, are, who don't have to be reintegrated into the society. So going to jail here is like going to hell. I bet it is. So, <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that's an overstatement. So you've got the receipt. Now you wait even more, right? How long can you expect to wait before they may actually bestow upon you this passport that you're hoping for? I will have to wait maybe for a month or two. Okay. Maybe by it's the end bad. of March it will be out. That's about. I mean, what's it take in the United States? That seems on par. A month doesn't sound too bit, too yeah. far off. Of yeah. So that's about that's about the same as uh, as over here. And your intention is hopefully to get out here for I presume the Porcupine Freedom Festival, if that's possible, right? Yes. As soon as the passport is ready, I think you guys will send me an invitation. Then I will head to the embassy for the processing. It's very exciting. So, oh, what else did you uh, want to share uh, with our listeners tonight, Akko? If anything, yes, I I want to share this issue of Boko Haram and how they are destroying Cameroon and how our law, our our forces of law and order are unable to do anything until a, a small country like Chad has to come and intervene in order to. Let's fight. talk about it, Boko Haram, because all most Americans know about Boko Haram is they kidnapped and killed, or did they kill them or release them? The uh, the girls, they killed them, right? They are, not, they are not different from ISIS. They are not different from what ISIS is doing. Boko Haram is just like our own version of ISIS. In Stand Africa. by, Akko. We'll bring you back here in a moment. There's more coming up from uh, Cameroon, Africa. Akko is with us. And, of course, you can call in about anything you want. Maybe you've got a question for Akko. 855-450-FREE. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live, the show where anyone can call about whatever they want. And we do mean anyone. The first point is, it's legal and that's important. Now my question to you would be, they gassed Jews legally in Germany. Was that a good law? Well, I don't know. I don't live in Germany. Come on. You don't know? You don't know whether it was a good idea to gas Jews? You don't know whether it was a good idea to incarcerate Japanese Americans during World War II? What does that have to do with them crossing the borders of the United States of America? I'm making a point, and I'm drawing a parallel, and it's a clear parallel, and you're dodging it. Do good people disobey bad laws, Buck? No. Good people do not disobey bad laws? Criminals dodge the law. Uh, Buck, uh, wait a second. What if they outlawed guns in your state? Would you turn yours in, Buck? Oh, absolutely in a minute. You would? Well, I'm <laughs> yeah. sorry. You're a fascist. Bye. Yeah. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're welcome to dial in toll-free here and bring up anything you want from anywhere in the world. We've got Skype. Skype in uh, at username lrn.fm. And call in toll free at 855 450 free. Joining you tonight, it's Ian Cantwell and Mark. Don't forget to check out Chris Cantwell's website. 
ChristopherCantwell.com. You've just posted a, would you describe it as a manifesto, Chris? It was not a manifesto of any means. You might describe it as a short autobiography. I, yeah. I set out to write um, how I became a libertarian, but as in the course of doing that, it sort of occurred Developed. to me that that's a very long story, right? <laughs> that this begins from the time I'm a very young child because all of these things influenced me as I grew up. And I and wrote it, something like that, too. Yeah, um, free keen. Yeah, I will. Uh, I would. I would like to see that one. I. I it. It was. It was fun for me to write. I. I feel like it made me reflect on a number of yeah. things, and it was. Uh, it. It ended up putting out over seven thousand words, which took me all yesterday and today to to write. So I'd encourage people to check that out when they have the time, because a lot of people are complaining it's too long, and I'm like, well, I'm sorry, I needed yeah. to address a rather lengthy topic. <laughs> you don't have to read everything, uh, but it's there for you. ChristopherCantwell.com. As we go back to Akko, he is in Cameroon, Africa, in Bamenda after traveling 40 kilometers, an hour and a half, uh, purchasing time on the internet, borrowing a laptop. I mean, these are the <laughs> these are the steps <laughs> that Akko goes through just to call this show. Oh, yeah, and it's 2 in the morning over there uh, as well. So thank you, Akko, for taking that time and effort to share your story with us. You were talking about the sort of passport journey that you've been on, but then you wanted to, you told us you wanted to discuss Boko Haram, and this is uh, something that maybe people in America and the United States probably know very little about. There were the stories about them kidnapping and killing. Did they kill the girls? I don't remember that detail. That's this is how much I know about Boko Haram. Did they kill? Can you, can you imagine those girls right up to now are nowhere to be found in Nigeria? They're gone. They disappeared. I, I, Yes, Nigeria too is a very an incompetent government. They, they cannot fight for the security of their own people. The same as Cameroon. Imagine that we we didn't do anything to fight against Boko Haram until Chad had to send their forces now, and the forces now have. What are they doing? What what is Boko Haram doing in Cameroon right now? They kidnap, they kill, randomly, irrespective of who you are, your really? religion. If you are a Westerner, they kidnap you for ransom. That is what they have been doing. But the idea is, I mean, are they some sort of uh, a militant force looking to uh, play the most people game in order to Absolutely. take over the government? Is that the idea? Absolutely. Their aim here is to uh, is to establish a caliphate extending from Chad, okay. Cameroon, Nigeria, and even Niger. Sim something similar to what ISIS is trying to do in Syria, Iraq. And 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 other and other and other areas in the Middle East, they are they are just similar to it. They have no political uh, agenda. What what they want to do is just for them to create their caliphate and terrorize people. They are they are preaching about Islam. That I, is I not certainly wouldn't Islam say that that's not a political agenda. I mean, the 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 caliphate. If you're not familiar with that word, I mean, that is basically the idea of yeah. you're going to have a global Islamic state. It's a theocracy. Yeah, they these yes. people want to have a a global theocratic government based on. Islam and their, their and, interpretation of Islam, right? Exactly, yeah, I, and of course they and, and of course different uh, radical groups have different interpretations, but it generally comes down to we're going to kill everyone who does what, what we don't like. What what they, what they are even doing contradict what Islam even stands for. They are sure. talking about caliphate, but caliphate does not propag propagate the killing of innocent people. And even if somebody is not a Muslim, it doesn't mean that you have to go and kill them. What they are doing there is nothing but extremism and acts of terrorism. And ha they have to be battled and they have to be crushed. And Cameroon is not going to be able to do that. We need international help. We need forces like the United States and... Oh, no, no, careful no, what you, you wish for, pal. Let I'm telling you. you, there's a lot of folks who have said we need the help of the United States and did not feel good about what they got, pal. Yeah, you definitely don't want the help of the United States. Mm -hmm. um, if there's some way to help yourselves, that's the way to go about it. I mean, maybe people in the United States individually could, I say get provide, out. <laughs> could provide help. Uh, well, I mean, it's nice to say get out, Mark, but it, the, there's nowhere easy. to really go, right? I mean, because there, all of these places in the world are controlled by criminal gangs calling themselves governments who vary in degree as far as the severity of how kind of awful they are towards uh, people in general. The, 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 simple, the simple reason why I'm saying we need an international help like from the U.S., we, it, it is with regards to what the U.S. is doing against the ISIS in Iraq and Syria. Look, look at the airstrikes. It has helped to push them behind. If not, look at the no. town of Kobani. 
No, I don't believe those stories. I, I would you? I would encourage you to think for a second, though, because the, the situation, I mean, ISIS is basically using U.S. military hardware. I mean, there was this like 30 or 40 minute long video of uh, one of one of the ISIS uh, militants talking about all of this stuff that they had basically gotten from the United States invading Iraq in the first place. The the ISIS was really created by the United States. And so yep. when you're when you're talking about by the, the government, by yeah, the U.S. government, by the United States government going in there, toppling the Iraqi government. And I mean, I mean, look, the Iraqi government was a horrific thing, right? Saddam Hussein was not a nice guy. ISIS is worse. And and what happened but he was, was put in place by the United States. Well, exactly. <laughs> but then they were like, hey, oh, well, this didn't pan out. And it's just intervention after intervention after intervention. Look, Boko Haram, not nice guys. Really terrible folks up to really no good. But I'm telling you, I'm warning you ahead of time. The United States comes in there. You're going to end up with a situation that it probably looks pretty good for a minute. You're going to be like, hey, the bad guys are dead. Hey, isn't, isn't that swell? They killed the bad guys. Well. Well, what happens is you get new bad guys, and they're right. worse every single time. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Uh, you know, violence, uh, but, unfortunately— but, 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 Go ahead. But single-handedly, single Cameroonians and Nigerians cannot do anything to battle Boko Haram. The situation is going to depreciate and ex- de- deteriorate. Wrong. Many many innocent lives are going to be lost. What Wrong. if they? What what if you? Just out of curiosity. So I mean, uh, one of the concepts here of a free man is is they're able to own a weapon. What if people? And I understand it's costly. I'm not I'm not claiming that um, it's not. It certainly is. And a lot of people, if they got a weapon, they'd sell it in order to get more food or whatever. But what if um, people in your town uh, were able to? arm themselves can you can you arm yourself in yeah, i don't know i don't know if that's legal what if you were able to have an ak-47 could <laughs> could that um, handle boko haram in cameroon weapons are very scarce weapons are not authorized to be held by individuals yeah well, that's if part you of the problem. A weapon, you go to jail yeah imagine so- somebody like me i am about 30 years old now i've never i've never seen a gun i've never touched a gun wow so but the Boko is, Haram guys have plenty of them, well, right? Well, and that's exactly it. So I mean, you're you're in a situation that's, where you've been you've been rendered defenseless by the state, and so yeah. when the bad guys come around and they don't care about the laws of the state, then you're you're just uh, right. uh, ready prey for for any t- sort of predator. They've out there. outlawed the guns, and now the outlaws have the guns. Exactly, and this is a predictable circumstance. It's something that we're fighting against happening here in the United States. Yeah. Much of that's the one country of the you left New New York. What's one of the reasons I left New? York? York is that in New York, I mean, look, guns are not unheard of there. The federal government has, to some extent, prevented the New York state government from completely banning all weapons, which they would do if if they were not prevented from doing so by federal courts. Um, and it's a it's a situation that we've seen happen time and again that basically a people are disarmed because the state wants to do to them things that they could not do if the people were armed and that's what you're dealing with now and yeah. it's turning out badly sure enough i agree with chris Akko. thank you for the call tonight um i definitely appreciate hearing from you and i think that uh, turning to a different state to solve your problems is not going to work out i mean these guys have similar tactics And the U.S. government coming in and using violence is, as Chris pointed out, just going to foment worse thugs to uh, take control and kill people. It's Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pillard. Do the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Worried about getting sick and feeling terrible for days or even weeks? You need Immudine for a healthy immune system. Why get sick and bother with products that just don't work? For just a dollar a day, Immudine is all natural and safe for all lifestyles. Call 866-257-8668 to buy now before it's too late, before you get sick. Or go to immudyne.com, immudine.com, or call 866-257-8668. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, 
The best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24-7 to help you. We also have other pain-relieving braces, too, for your shoulder, ankle, or back. You may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you, so please call now. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You dial on in toll-free here if you'd like to take part in this program. We can talk a little more about Ross Ulbricht. Also on the way, possibly net neutrality, maybe vaccines. Uh, The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And we've got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Technical note, if you're calling to talk to someone we have on the air, if they're on Skype, you can't call on Skype. So I'm sorry to anyone that there was a gentleman who wanted to actually talk to Akko, and unfortunately he called on Skype, so that just couldn't happen. Uh, But I'm sure we'll hear from Akko again. When I was little, uh, my mom would always get me Valentine's Day gifts. Um, I don't know if this is common in the world, but this is how it was in my family. On Valentine's Day, my mother wanted to make sure that uh, she, at the very least, was one of my Valentines. So she'd get me, you know, something like maybe some candy or a, uh, a little stuffed animal or a card or something like that. And it was always very nice. I felt very special when she did that. And I want you to consider that. Valentine's Day is coming up um, very shortly here. Uh, we're just uh, less than two weeks away. And you're going to ha- you have a mother. You, you, just about everybody does. They may or may not be living. But, uh, you know, if your mother's living and you've if you've got a Valentine, a sweetheart, if you've got a child, a wife, a husband, these are all great choices for Sherry's berries. Sherry's berries are giant, freshly j- dipped strawberries, um, and they come in three different flavors, dark chocolate, milk chocolate, and white chocolate. Now, I'm usually not a white chocolate fan, but 
I, the white chocolates are my favorite because I love them. Yeah, they're just they're just delicious. They're now, tied though with me. I love also the dark chocolate with all the chocolate chips all over it. Oh my gosh, that's so good. I think it's the strawberries that make it uh, because somehow they manage to get berries that are always sweet. You know, when you go to the grocery store and you buy berries, they yeah, there's it, some losers in half there of them that are just sour. But uh, can't well, you just had yours. Yeah, I had mine during an earlier break and they were very good. I'm not really supposed to be eating chocolate, but when I I looked at them i was like all right i'm gonna have to do this and and i i particularly like the i think it was the milk chocolate with the nuts on top yeah. oh, certainly okay. my favorite one and uh i i've heard the sherry's berries commercial i listen to conservative talk sure. right? i've been hearing this commercial forever a long time and saying that i'm gonna go do it i'm gonna go do it i'm gonna do it but uh i finally got to taste them today and i highly recommend it well when you're gonna do it use code ftl well when you're gonna do it you can get uh six of them for 19.99 but you can double your order for just ten dollars more but either way you've still got to use the code to get those deals yes that's true uh, I, I believe I, I believe that's the, the case that is anyway the case. please go to sh- berries.com b-e-r-r-i-e-s.com click on the microphone in the upper right hand corner enter ftl and then the deals will be presented to you in that way and I, you know i really want to encourage you Sherry's, this is a no-brainer this is yeah, great stuff since the rush limbaugh incident where he called that uh, gal a slut it killed advertising on talk radio and sherry's berries is taking a chance on free talk live because there's uh, you know the, there's lots of other choices and free talk live you know we've got a unique audience so please let's reward them by doing our uh, translation a skeptical audience <laughs> they're skeptical <laughs> our, our audience is skeptical i yeah. assure you you will get what you pay for and i assure you you'll be happy with, with what you get um they're also i think our audience is uh, also thrifty you know mm-hmm. um and i think that that's fine but whoever you love when they get these berries they're really going to enjoy them b e r r i e s Dot com. Uh, the microphone's in the upper right-hand corner. Type in FTL and do it today. Order today. Sherry's Berries. All right. More about uh, Ross Ulbricht coming up. He's been sentenced, or not been sentenced, he's been found guilty. Sentencing still to come. We've got Dalek and Cap on the line in Colorado via Skype. Dalek, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, hello. So um, first thing I would like to say, I might be cracking out a little bit. i um, just wanting to bring that out first. But, you're cracking um, out? Does that yeah, mean you don't, just smoke don't, crack? Don't I, I, crack I, out. I, like, um, you know, I go out in and out just because of my uh, my internet connection. Oh, the internet. Okay, thank goodness. The crack's a really bad idea. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, crack's whack, crack. buddy. Anyways. <laughs> it's wiggity, wiggity, right, whack. So, <laughs> all right. Um, so first thing, I would like to actually uh, direct this question to Countwell, or actually add uh, to the conversation, is uh, two of the points I have with, uh, with one of your posts, uh, seven... Seven things to do uh, in order to become a libertarian. Seven steps and- to becoming a libertarian. Yeah, this was a really great article, by the way, Thank Chris. You. you gave some really stellar examples of how people can kind of uh, raise their profile, create media, and I thought it was really detailed. Good stuff. Thanks. So go ahead. Definitely. Um. So one of the things that I uh, I think maybe you forgot to say is uh, bring up your own like uh, bring your new unique way to uh, bring out and uh, through. Uh, the, the YouTube sphere, whether it's through the libertarianism, because uh, from it, the difference between you and the other person that is around the crowd is how you stand out. It's how you do things, how you format it. And not only that, I mean, I bet you had the, the same thing, whether it's through uh, oh, Gigi Bowman and uh, everybody, everything else that uh, within your own party, that you um, actually use that network. Getting a network is very valuable to actually get your information out there through all the information that you know, you understand. You have basic knowledge, but you really do need to have a network and also bring something unique to the table within a sea of information. I don't know that that was left out of the article. I was actually pretty specific that you had to talk about something other than libertarianism, right? Because if you want to, uh, for example, so I do sort of the dirty comic thing. Free Talk Live is a show where, where people can bring up basically anything and we'll address any number of topics. Kokesh does the futurism thing. Tom Woods uh, discusses history a great deal. So you have to add something else to it. You can't just talk about liberty all the time. You have to add something to it in order to bring new people in and to keep your audience's attention. I'm not sure that that was left out of the article, but if I didn't hammer it home enough, I apologize. 
Yeah, I mean, you you skimmed on uh, within the article, but uh, for what it was, it was a great article to intrigue people uh, of how, you know, to get into uh, the the uh, famous libertarian side. I don't know what to call it. The Why you would really want to, I don't know. I mean, if there you're are a glutton people for who punishment. Do. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 an exceedingly unrewarding, you know, option to basically put your, your political opinions out there for everybody to scrutinize. You're going to attract a great deal of scorn. I mean, there's there's but some people want that, you know. I mean, uh, when I was, you know, watching different libertarian outlets when I didn't have much of a, a profile, you know, I sort of saw it and I was a little envious of some people, right? And I was like, hey, I want to create something like this for myself. And there's other people out there and I say, hey, here's a few steps that you're going to take. Okay. Personally, I don't really want it, but I'm willing to deal with it because I think freedom's that important. Yeah, I wish the libertarianism, and that's what they call somebody who is a of note in the liberty movement, I wish it paid because it's certainly doesn't well the thing the trick is to make it pay right Barely. it doesn't pay much right. but there are ways and i discussed That's because the liberty movement isn't very large you know if you look at uh, the average liberty oriented video and thanks by the way dalek i appreciate the call if you look at the average uh, liberty oriented video on youtube you're lucky. It's a good, like a hit of a video if you crack 10,000 uh, views. Yeah. Whereas, you know, other stuff like prank yeah. videos or comedy videos or gross videos or whatever, you know, this kind of thing, uh, those are going to be in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views. And it's fairly easy. Now, there are, there are a zillion of them out there, so I don't want to say it's easy for them to go viral, but it's more likely they're going to go viral because people don't want things that require them to think. Well, and that's that's sort of, I guess, what he was getting at and what I skimped on in the, in the article. Every was that critic, you want to put you you want to attach it to something else so that you get liberty in front of other people. So we did, for example, Josie and I when she was here, we did the uh, ice bucket challenge video with blood, where I ended up dumping a bucket of blood on top of her. So and and these videos are going all over the place. People were dumping uh, buckets of ice water on each other to raise awareness about ALS, and we're like, yeah, this is the blood of the 260 million people who were murdered by their own governments in the 20th century, and that got around. Right, so you have to attach it to something that's going to be of more interest because most people are not just going to sit around for a lesson in Austrian economics that you ramble on right. on YouTube about. And that did pretty well, forty-seven thousand views. That's pretty darn good. That's pretty for good a for liberty a video. video, right? And I hope that number one on your list on how to be a celebritarian was to have two X chromosomes because that really makes a big difference <laughs> as far as this goes. It's hard to have a Y chromosome and be successful. Yeah. There's more coming up at eight fifty-five, four fifty-three. That's eight. 855-450-3733. This is Free Talk Live. Look, kid, when guys like us walk into a facility in the morning, we can smell a problem. No one needs to hand us a work order. We already know it. Today, for instance, we need a new gearbox, six globe valves, and a dozen ballasts. And when I smell a problem, Granger smells that I smell a problem. They help me keep this place up and running. Now that's the kind of smell I like. The sweet smell of success. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. What good is a Big Berkey water filter? We get that question a lot here at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And in a word, the answer is protection. Protection from water main breaks, E. coli contamination, environmental chemical spills, pesticide runoff, chlorine taste and smell, and all forms of fluoride. Plus, Big Berkey water filters are the original gravity water filter system and most trusted on the market for a reason. Tested by multiple independent NSF EPA certified labs, they are the gold standard in water purification. At only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. That means big savings. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get a Big Berkey today at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. GCN listeners receive 5% off all ceramic filter systems. Visit our website or call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water.
Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hard-working men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. But there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you're invited to take control of the airwaves. 855-450-FREE. You get to bring up what you want. You can also join us via Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Join us online over at freetalklive.com and get interactive on the site. Uh, you can vote, for instance, right there on the front page. It's a Reddit-based voting system, so it's free. You can submit content, maybe a news article or a blog post, perhaps a YouTube video that you enjoyed. You submit it right there to the front page of the site. Other listeners can vote on it. You can vote on things as well. Vote it up if you like, down if you don't. It's all free. Go get interactive for free at freetalklive.com. Of course, download archives and all kinds of other cool stuff. Let's go to your calls and thoughts, then more on the Ross Ulbricht guilty verdict. We'll tell you what happened in the courtroom on the way, but first, Chris Kringle is calling from the North Pole, a.k.a. <sighs> Pete in California. Now, Pete, can you actually start your call by getting into a topic rather than praying to Jesus? Let me tell you what the, li- it, uh, the Bible says something about libertarians, you know? Oh, is that right? What's that? Where the oh, yes. Spirit of the Lord Jesus is, there's says liberty. That- Jesus says he prefers it that you be hot or cold, not lukewarm. If you're lukewarm, he's going to spit you out his mouth. Yeah, so spew. He's re- really talking about vomiting. Yeah, he's going to vomit you out the mouth. The reason why I'm a con- well, I'm an independent, but I lean more towards the conservative side is because libertarians. The thing I, I agree with you on the liberty stuff, but what I don't agree with you on is this. You know, I don't agree with this. Oh well. You know, you can do whatever you want, but just don't do it to me. I don't like that because when when are you going to take a stance for morality? I know you're like you can oh, do whatever do. you want, but don't do it to me. That's not what. Yeah, I, I take a stance is. for yeah. morality. I take a strong stance. I take a stance for your, for morality for everyone, for equal treatment for you everyone. And what my claim is is that morality is is that you can do what you want as long as you don't harm somebody else or steal from them, okay, okay. lie to them, that sort of thing. And I would contend that. Uh, you know that that a morality that uh, that that comes from what is obvious in the world uh, is is better than a morality that's just handed down from a book from other men that were written that's by other lie. human beings. Well, uh, I would. He, I think Pete, did you did you ask Mark during the, the course was, of his uh, premise there? Did you ask him about abortion? Was that your question? Yeah, I was going to ask what your stance is. Oh, 
Oh, maybe is that just uh, what about drug abuse? What about homosexuality? Well, come on, you can. Well, how many questions you, do you think? Do you want to populate the whole show, or do you want to ask a question? So, so look, I mean, look, we've we've talked about drugs and sex before on this show with you, Pete. You know what our stance is on that. We're not going to agree on it today, but I'd say that if you if you talk to fifty libertarians, you may well hear fifty different positions on abortion. Abortion could be 100. abortion is one of those libertarian conundrums, and I actually would probably uh, agree with you in large part about abortion. I actually have some very strong opinions on abortion. I wrote about them. You can read uh, on ChristopherKetwell.com. There's a there's an article titled On Evictionism and Abortion, where uh, Walter Block had put forward this thing that he called evictionism, where basically, no, you don't have any right to kill your child, but you can sort of evict it from the womb and let it die, which I thought was horrific. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I personally, I view abortion as an act of violence. I don't think it's a, a thing that uh, people should be engaging in. I think that we should start frowning on that as a society, but at the same time, I would say that none of us have any agency in the matter between a, a mother and her unborn child, right? If a, if a woman decides to abort her baby, we have no right to use force against her, but I would not be terribly upset if uh, a society decided to ostracize somebody for it because I think it's a terrible, terrible act. Thanks for the call, uh, Chris. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Back to uh, the story of Ross Ulbricht. He was convicted today in, after a three-and-a-half-hour-long deliberation by a jury in Manhattan federal court of various different counts, conspiracy to sell drugs, conspiracy to hack, uh, conspiracy to money launder, and kingpin charge, and some other mix of those charges, I think. And it's horrifying. And, uh, of course, Ross uh, hasn't hurt anybody. There's no evidence he ever actually harmed anyone. There's some flimsy evidence that maybe he was in control of the Dread Pirate Roberts account and possibly ordered some hits to be put out on somebody. But there's no real evidence for that. Well, and those people who he allegedly put those hits out on were extortionists. These people were threatening to put him in exactly the position that he's in now where he's going to go to prison for the rest of his life. So I'm sorry to tell you, folks, if you go out... Out there and you take a person who's uh, just uh, trying to provide a market service and isn't harming anybody and you put him in a position where the most powerful gang in the history of mankind is going to come after him and rip him away from his family and throw him it's in a, a hole where he's going to be raped and murdered it's a it's a serious crime for you to do that to somebody and if he retaliates i don't blame him so wire.com's andy greenberg reporting here that uh, ulbrich's legal team has said they will appeal the decision and cited their frequent calls for a mistrial and protests against the judge's decisions throughout the case. And we went over a few of those earlier and how just absolutely ridiculous and de- just devastating uh, they were to the defense. As the verdict was read, Ulbrich stared straight ahead. His mother, Lynn, slowly shook her head and his father, Kirk, put a hand to his temple. After the verdict, Ulbrich turned around to give his family a stoic smile. This is not the end, Ulbricht's mother said loudly as he was led out of the courtroom. Good for her, by the way, for speaking up like that. I mean, it's I, I understand this must be a incredibly diff, difficult moment uh, to be Ross's parents. I mean, oh, obviously, yeah. you try to prepare yourself for something like this, but can you really prepare yourself for the moment that your son is uh, escorted away to what is what may end up being a life sentence in prison? So good for her for being willing to break the silence in court and actually speak up. I think that's a courageous move on her part, even though I don't necessarily agree with you know her pulling out the activists, asking the activists to go home rather than continuing to distribute literature. Right. But to break the silence in court is this taboo thing. You know, when it, whenever you're in a courthouse, it's always no one talks. They're just whispering. They're just whispering. No talking. No talking. You'll be removed. Well, I mean, and I don't even mean in the courtroom. I mean in the courthouse. Right. You know, if they're just waiting outside of the courtroom to get into the courtroom, people just whispering with one another. They don't even want to raise their voices. It's like being in church. A really creepy, scary, violent uh, church. And so in addition to Ulbricht's mother saying loudly as he was let out of the courtroom, this is not the end, Ross is a hero, was shouted by a supporter in the audience as well. Now, this is also a risky move. If the judge is sitting in the court at that time, that judge could absolutely find you in contempt of court. 
Yeah, if contempt of court like is it. one of those things that it's more or less this guy points and says, you go to jail and you do. That's right. There there's is not no like trial. A, yeah, there's not like a list of uh, you know particular offenses that you engage in to get held in contempt of court. You are subjecting yourself to arrest just on the risk of upsetting the judge. It's not a law. It's not written down. It's a power of the court. Exactly. Yes, and it's just it's an unquestioned, uh, unquestionable power that there's – you get a right of allocution – here in New Hampshire, and that yeah. means that you can speak to the judge about why you were in contempt, it's, supposedly. It's an opportunity to beg. And, yeah, at that point, he might show you some sort of level of mercy, but uh, that's all you get. Yep. So kudos to Ross's mother for speaking Absolutely, up. Absolutely, yeah. And kudos to whoever the heroic supporter was in that courtroom who spoke up, because we do that stuff. Here in New Hampshire, it's frequently done where somebody's being let out of court, and, you know, I'll say... We love you a demo or something, or I love yeah. you a demo or something like My that. My favorite is when, uh, uh, when the, the you know somebody will be brought in, usually before the judge, but the uh, the defendant will be brought in and whatever, and uh, the activist will say, "All rise for the defendant." And that uh, doesn't happen that often. That's John Connell who does that one, and it's and, a good one. And Roger Grant does it too. Oh, does he? Okay, good. Yeah. And anyway, so I think it's very clever. And yeah. th- what you'll get is you'll actually get uh, sometimes some of the uh, the ordinary folks. Has that happened? Uh, that's as I've seen. As, as I they recall, just respond when they're told to stand. <laughs> yeah. I'm not surprised. Well, yeah. if you, if, you, if, if you have that authoritative sound in your voice, yeah. people will do what you. That's Absolutely. true, especially if they don't see you say it. Right. Yeah. Like if uh, if you. Call Call that out from the back of the yep. courtroom, and then the whole audience are looking forward, wrapped with attention at the uh, the goings on <laughs> in the front. They may presume it was a bailiff who said it and and stand up. So yeah, there's some fun stuff that we do here, and when you have numbers of people together, it makes it a lot easier. So kudos to that guy for being willing to be the one guy who said something. Yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, I'm surprised we haven't heard about more outbursts in the in the courtroom there. I, well, I, would you by the mainstream media? I wonder about that. Maybe I, they would. Maybe they well. Wouldn't. I mean, we don't we don't have to rely on just the mainstream media, do That's we? True. We've got the Liberty Beat bringing us information from there. So certainly, I, I am, we would hear about it. Yeah. yeah so I think if uh, somebody had stood up and shouted in the in the courtroom, we'd probably hear about it from them, if nobody else. Glenn's in Philly. You're on Free Talk Live, Glenn. Glenn in Philadelphia, going once. Uh, yeah, I've been, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Oh, okay, great, great. Um, yeah, I've been you know listening to you talk about this case. Uh, the only reason I call in, I just, there's a big difference between asserting that, okay, this, this, a uh, you know, victimless crime, this fellow isn't hurting anybody, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then I heard an outburst about someone saying, um, you know, he put hits out on somebody, and, well, that was justified because they were, you know, extorting money from him and threatening to get him in trouble with the law. Now, yeah, it makes me very it's uncomfortable, and I want to talk about well, it. Yeah, stand by, Glenn. We'll bring you back. Uh, we'll ha- hang you through the news, and we'll come back to you. 855 450 free. I feel like Cantwell's right on this one that, you know, if you're being extorted for your life, you can defend your life. It's Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. You're listening to the Liberty Beat, your daily source for liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. John Bush here with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, February 4th, 2015. Gold is trading around $1,260, silver around $17.27, and Bitcoin is trading around $228. Today's metals prices are brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. The New York City courtroom hosting the Ross Ulbricht trial was filled with tension Tuesday afternoon as Judge Catherine Forrest shut down more witnesses and arguments from Ross Ulbricht's defense in the Silk Road trial. On day 11 of the trial, the defense and prosecution gave their closing statements and the jury prepared to deliberate. The prosecution told the jury that the defense was attempting to cloud their minds by fabricating a conspiracy theory surrounding Ross Ulbricht. Defense attorney Joshua Dreytel told the jury that the government lacked conclusive evidence to link Ross Ulbricht to the Silk Road and the purchase of large amounts of drugs. Ulbricht is facing seven counts of conspiracy. Wednesday morning, Judge Forrest will instruct the jurors on the law and the deliberation process will begin. Liberty Beat reporter Derek Rose will be live in the courtroom reporting throughout the day. Copwatch activists in Stockton, California are launching a crowdfunding effort to root out corrupt and violent police officers. The activists are offering $2,500 to anyone who submits information leading to the arrest or termination of violent cops. A flyer for the campaign lists 15 officers to look out for and includes a picture of 10 cops accused of brutalizing or killing Americans. Stockton Police Chief Eric Jones stated he is concerned that the flyer might be intended to put officers at risk and said he thought it was sad and disheartening to see a flyer like this with a $2,500 bounty. Indigenous communities in the Peruvian Amazon continue to fight against oil contamination caused by state projects. Men, women, and children with the Quechua have blocked oil company boats from passing through the River Tiger for almost a month now. The local communities say the companies are polluting the river and they will no longer allow the companies to operate. Quechua leader Jose Fachin has said the communities are ready to die defending the river. Communities are asking for remediation, compensation, and to be consulted on future projects. Support for the Liberty Beat Silk Road coverage comes from Bitcoinism.liberty.me. Thoughts on Bitcoin and the future digital economy. Check out the blog at Bitcoinism.liberty.me. Support for our Silk Road coverage also comes from the Free State Project. Want to find liberty in your lifetime? Join thousands of others who are making the move to New Hampshire, the freest state in the Union. To learn more or to pledge to move today, visit freestateproject.org. An investigator has revealed that a prominent prosecutor in Argentina who recently died under mysterious circumstances had drafted a request for President Cristina Fernandez to be arrested under conspiracy charges. Alberto Niesman was found dead in an apparent suicide on January 18th. However, suspicions arose because of the nature of Niesman's investigation. He had been investigating whether President Fernandez had attempted to interfere with an investigation into the bombing of a Jewish center. Niesman believed Fernandez covered up a connection between the bombings and the Iranian government in exchange for oil. The lead investigator into Niesman's death stated that the file was found in the trash at Niesman's house. The day after his death, Niesman was scheduled to speak before Congress regarding his claims about Fernandez. 
The British Army has announced the creation of a new special forces unit that will counteract narratives on social media. The anti-media reports that a military spokesperson said the 77th Brigade will formally be established in April to meet the challenges of modern conflict and warfare. There will be 1,500 so-called Facebook warriors who will spread disinformation and propaganda across social media platforms. How much food is in your pantry right now? Could you feed your family for two weeks, one week? How about three days without any help? eFoods Direct is food security for whatever the future holds. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 1-800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. You've been listening to the Liberty Beat. Remember to question everything and always live free. I just got off the phone with New York. We are the number one network in the world. And it is an honor to stand before you at such an exciting time. We're stretching boundaries that will irreparably alter people's perception of what they are willing to watch. And our next season will offer tantalizing programming that plays seamlessly into the desire of our viewers. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you just a taste of what ODS has to offer. You know the rules. Grow a pumpkin or go home. Here's the twist. Only one of you has the real pumpkin seeds. Are you a pumpkin or not? You call yourselves pumpkin growers? I know I didn't get the pumpkin seeds. I dug in there. They're bean sprouts. Starting a pumpkin alliance. Anyone grows a pumpkin, we split the money. Get out of my patch. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free to take control at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, the FCC chairman is proposing net neutrality rules, uh, proposing the federal government get even more involved in Internet connections. And, of course, when government gets involved, things get even more messed up than they have ever been. But we can talk further about that here in a moment with you in studio. It's me, Ian. Cantwell. And Mark. We're going back to your phone calls and thoughts here. For those of you just tuning in, we've spent a lot of the show talking about the Ross Ulbricht verdict. It's guilty on all counts. He's going to be spending likely at least 30 years on a minimum sentence or as many as maximum of life. Uh, when the sentencing happens, which will be in May. We'll continue to keep you in the loop as it develops, but it led to another discussion about defending oneself against an extortionist, somebody who's claiming, hey, you hand over $500,000 or I'm going to put you in a position where you will go to prison for the rest of your life. That's right. essentially something that you know Ross Ulbricht, a.k.a. Dread Pirate Roberts, was allegedly threatened with during his tenure uh, in control of the Silk Road. Right, and of course, this was never proven. He wasn't charged with doing it, but uh, uh, and people have brought hit, it up with hiring a hitman. You right, yeah. and but what came up during the uh, before the break was that I said, well, I don't care if he did do it because if you are in a position where somebody is going to go out of their way to try to take money from you, and if you don't obey them, to throw you in a cage for the rest of your life, well, I'm sorry. If there's if there's a very simple choice. Between me going to prison for the rest of my life or you dying, guess what? I'm going to empty my revolver into your chest and not have a, a single bit of remorse about it. Let's bring Glenn on. That's what he wanted to talk about here, but he we picked up his call just at the end of the last hour. So, Glenn, go ahead with your thoughts. Do we have Glenn in Philadelphia? Glenn going once. Glenn going twice. Maybe the uh, board operator is having technical difficulties. Well, let me address it a little bit. Try to bring him back. So I'm extraordinarily uncomfortable with uh, this whole uh, murder for hire aspect of the, uh, the Silk Road situation. I'm very, very uncomfortable with it. But from a philosophical standpoint, I kind of have to I – don't, I don't like your bombastic way of, of claiming it, Cantwell, but – I, I, you know, from a philosophical standpoint, I have to say, look, if somebody was threatening to take my wife and my child and kidnap them and put them, uh, kidnap them from me forever or for some period of time, yes, I would use deadly force in order to prevent that from happening. If somebody was attempting to do that to me, yes, I would use deadly force to prevent that from happening because I have to protect my wife and child. I am, you know, sworn. I took an oath to protect them. And 
the uh, you know so if somebody intends to use the agency of some organization to get that done they really don't absolve themselves of the responsibility right. if i haven't done anything wrong i don't deserve the incarceration and if i'm going to get the incarceration you're threatening me with uh, you're threatening with kidnapping. Very mm-hmm. long period of time of kidnapping. Possibly your life. Yeah. I mean, what what would be considered to some extension torture, right? Like this, uh, you know, forced uh, detainment. Yeah, this is terrible stuff. Forced labor in a lot of cases. So I can see the libertarian argument for this. I am still... I I am still very uh, disturbed by the aspect in the Silk Road case. Here's the reason, is we're not talking about a skilled criminal. We're talking about a rank amateur who attempted to set up a business, who paid to kill some essentially anonymous individual. If um, you believe the claims. Right, and likely was completely scammed out of money because it looks like he paid the person who had originally extorted him to kill himself and then come back and demand more money to kill more imaginary selves. That's more plausible because the there were no murders. There's no evidence that anybody was ever killed as a result of Russell or whoever Dread Pirate Roberts was making those orders. So nobody ever got killed. So either the person who uh, was the hit man in that case was actually a federal agent, but he wasn't, at least according to the trial. They're, they never actually claimed that that person right. There's was been an no agent. charge. And this uh, is the question. Or the person to, is just scamming Ross. You, you, the, the question you have to ask yourself is, is it okay to use deadly force to prevent somebody from kidnapping you? The answer to that, I think the most people will say, is yes. yes. And then that's the only, th- about this blackmail, that's really the only question here is, well, let's, is if it's okay. Let's bring Glenn back. I think we actually have him here. Uh, Glenn, are you with us? Do we have Glenn? Well, Glenn going yeah, once? Can you hear me? There, there we, we go. go. We got okay. him. Go ahead. Yeah, this is pathetic. You know, it's one thing to justify the drug stuff. You turn around, oh, I'm going to have something to deal with contract killers, murderers, organized crime, and justify it in the name of, uh, uh, first of all, the extortionists aren't threatening the person's life. They're threatening his liberty. Yes, we said that. Finances. But if okay. you go to prison that's for life, your life has been threatened. And that's not kidnapping. That's not kidnapping. To turn around and kind of make moral equivalence between kidnapping and the functions of the government and the law to justify murder. <laughs> Same thing, well, brother. Welcome, welcome, just, welcome to Free Talk Live. Excuse me, Glenn, but just because somebody has a uniform on when they take your body and put you in a cage doesn't mean it's not kidnapping. Anywhere you're never going to prevail. In your, in yeah, how yourself, dare we actually talk about what's really happening? How dare we? Justify murder so you protect your little drug pusher. This is why you guys are never going to get anywhere. Don't police your park meters, parking meters. <laughs> Your little <laughs> well, I uh, I I appreciate your uh, your energy, uh, Glenn. I, I I thank you for uh, trying your best to shout over the guys with the microphones in order to make your point. It, it failed miserably, of course. But the way that radio still tends shouting. to work, Glenn, the way the way radio tends to work is that we more or less run the show here. Uh, so I appreciate you, you know, trying to make your point here, but I mean, why do you see, what? what is your, what is the difference, the, the moral difference that you see between a man with a badge and a man without taking someone uh, against their will to a place? Okay, well, first of all, listen to your power trip about having the microphones. We're, we have yeah. the microphones. Yeah, you're that's, right. That's, that's kind of how it works. You're right. He's, he's power tripping. Yeah. Well, well he's, you know, I can win. You have but when, uh, you know, oh, the government's not supposed to have any power. Yeah. Well, look, Glenn, if you start your own radio show, I fully expect that you're going to use the power of your microphone. That's how property fine. works. Well, fine. the thing is, Glenn, yeah, it's better to have a conversation than to have people shouting over each other. So really, this is just yeah, about right. good radio. Nobody's so when, hold on. When one person's talking, it's rude, Glenn, to, to talk over top of them constantly. And so Chris asked you a question. Would you like to have a conversation? Since you have some pretty okay, firm okay. ideas here. Okay, what's the question? The, 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 the question is, I want to know where you see the difference between a man with a badge and a man without taking someone to a place against their will. Your minimization of government is, look, government is a fact of life in all, yeah, uh, all of human sure history. Is. Humans will always... Humans Not all of human history. Through. Actually, the Human state has through. existed... Uh, just to correct you, the state has existed less than half of the history of Homo sapiens. Yeah, well, okay, I might need to see some historical... The first state, as we can figure it out, was Jericho 9,000 years ago. There's your fact. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah, and we you uh, yeah, and when you look at indigenous tribes and their types of social function and the way and they they you know look at indigenous tribes and their elders councils and stuff like that, it, you, humans have always okay. Had, I'll, I'll agree I'll with give you that one here. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give you that. The strong man, the strong man's a form of, of of government. Sure, okay, I get I get what you're saying now. I'm sorry, I thought you were ta- talking about an organized state. And the, and I get the it. Elders and, and the elders. They, there's, humans have always been had a propensity to be selfish and do things that are unreasonable and wrong. You never answered the question, though, Glenn. As have their leaders. You never what? answered the question. But, but to, but to, he's what, getting to what, it, I think. Okay, okay, what do you... Okay, what he's filibustering. He's, he's already he's you know, he he's asking me the what the question, question was again. He's not listening. <laughs> and this he is why this stuff. is this is why I said, Glenn. Look, it just seems to me like you you called here to sort of like shout over yeah. the host instead of actually no, have a conversation well, no, no, with us. Okay. And that's why I'm making the point about okay, the microphones. Okay, okay. We are trying to keep okay. things on track here. So work with us. I'm okay. asking you. Okay. Look, I understand you're trying to get to the root of government, which is going to be beyond the segment of radio that we have time to add for okay, you to okay, answer okay, the question. Okay, 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 okay. What's the question? The question, as I said for the third time now is where okay. do you draw the moral line between a man with a badge and a man without taking a person to a place against their will oh okay i would i would i would lend some sort of legitimacy to first of this dismissing of the man with a badge it isn't just a man with a fat badge it's not merely a man with a badge and it's not equivalent to kidnapping and contract murder murder is still murder okay i want to know why it's not equivalent to kidnapping please come back and explain that for us here 855 453 is it because of the badge is why it's not kidnapping slave catchers were working within the law they were deputized they had badges right not badges 855 453 some of them did the cops certainly did who were catching slaves, didn't they? Sheriff's Free Talk Live. Safety, safety, safety. I'm saying it three times. Studies show you need to hear something three times to remember it. So remember, safety, safety, safety is important to me, me, me. That's why I love Granger. Granger has the products to help keep our facilities safe and people safer. Say it with me, kid. Safety, safety, safety from Granger, Granger, Granger. When you think safety, think Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash safety or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll free to bring up what you want at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. At Skype username lrn.fm, you can send a contact request to us. Uh, it will be approved. And then once it is approved, you can easily call us on Skype. So again, Skype us at lrn.fm. A free pound of coffee. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. It's great coffee. It's among the best coffee you'll taste in your life because it's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% great Arabica beans. It's produced by BuzzBox. We've partnered with them. And the reason we've partnered with them is because... They give us back some of the proceeds that we can then loan out. I thought it was because we made money. Yeah, you know, money is great, but uh, I like I like what they do on top of that. That is nice. That they uh, they allow us to give micro loans to people around the world. You can be the bank. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're you're loaning money. Then when that money's paid back. You can loan it to somebody else. We've helped all kinds of people um, in in all kinds of countries get all kinds of different things. In some cases, it's uh, you know livestock. Other cases, it's to be able to purchase some used appliances so they can fix them and then resell them to other folks. Restaurant equipment, stocks, whatever they need. Uh, by stocks, I mean like stocks for their stores. It's coffee.freetalklive.com. It's a subscription. You sign up for it. You get the free pound. You can cancel at any time. You want you want the free pound and go? That's fine. You get the free pound, and then if you like it, you can continue the subscription. You can customize when you get it and the types of coffee you get. And if you continue... We're able to give microloans out with a small amount of the proceeds. So we're on with Glenn. He's he's hung on. We're going to bring him back here in a moment. But the essence of the discussion we were having a moment ago was that Glenn was saying that for whatever reason, when the police arrest somebody, it's not kidnapping, which, of course, I totally agree uh, with Cantwell that it absolutely is kidnapping, because to me, the definition of kidnapping is when someone who you did not give permission to do it, do this takes you from wherever it is you are and puts you in a place where you didn't want to be. I mean, that's basically what kidnapping is, right? right. And, and I guess, you know, as I had asked Glenn before we went to break was, where do you draw that line? That and I think this that was guy... too obscure. I think that question was maybe a little too obscure because we didn't get a clear answer on it. I think to maybe clarify that question is, Glenn, why is an arrest not kidnapping? I think is more a clear yeah. way to put that. Right. Well, okay. Basically, to get down to the, this question of between uh, just a man with a badge versus the badge representing something in terms of societal opinion. And That's societal just your authority. opinion. Just because you have an opinion. That's how society works. It's the, yes, it yep. is the society it is. have opinion. Okay, that doesn't Glenn, justify hold on, hold on. kidnapping. Glenn, you know that society's opinion up until uh, about the 18, about the 19th century was that it was okay to ho own human beings, right? Yes, I'm aware and of up until that question. point, look, all the look, societal look, momentum said look, that it is okay look, to employ somebody to go look, get your slaves your, and do whatever you look, want with them. You how do you explain the sea change? Look, you know, every time you hear something he you don't like, listening. you invoke. I know. You invoke. Yes, I am. I was listening. Every time. Can you hear me? You can't yeah. be listening when you're speaking. Yes. It's just a rule. Okay. It's yes. a rule of life. Listen, listen. This, you, every time you hear something you don't like, you invoke this question of relativity, subjectivity, and ambiguity. Relativity, subjectivity, ambiguity. Therefore, I don't have to do anything anybody else does any any time ever. Well, what does that have to do with this? Do no, I think that harmful to society. 
When people are doing things, the society as a whole, okay, delegates people to intervene because so they like don't, smoking you know, they pot, don't. but like smoking if, pot if, or if, drinking. If, 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 if like, I could, no, uh, okay, now I'm well, sorry, Glenn. I'm a contract murder. Yeah, look, look, you're 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 you're, side, you're you're railroading this issue. The issue is when no, you're dodging the question. No, I'm not dodging the question. Yeah, you've dodged I it more than three question. times at it's, this it's point. It's not kidnapping. Well, when it's not, it's kidnapping, not kidnapping because you're shouting louder is basically your only it's, argument. It's you not, have absolutely no, it's nothing. Not okay. It's you're asking me to. The, you're the asking me to tell you when. Delegated. Social contract, I think, is basically his argument. Is that? Social contract. Yeah. Yes. Okay. The okay. Show me the contract. So here's, here's when okay, here's well, when well. Uh, uh, contract killing is acceptable. Contract killing is acceptable. Only when the government does it, because it does it whenever the hell it wants. It employs. No, no, you asked me to answer the question. I'm going to do it, and you can't yell over me. I put him on hold. He definitely can't. <laughs> okay, so whenever they send somebody out, whenever they send a piece of paper, it's always the threat of killing that comes down with it. The penalty is always death. The penalty is always death, because when you say no, when you stand up for what the principle that you believe in, right, wrong, or indifferent. They will use force, and if they if you use come back force to force, they will use deadly force. If you happen to win against a couple of their agents, they will bring down the entire apparatus of the state upon you. So, I guess um, what all Glenn's saying is is that if you've got enough people with guns, then you're allowed to kill and no. threaten whomever Might you wish. Right. No, I'm not saying that okay. at all. I, and I'm saying you're, I'm saying. That you're you're in denial and you're you're lying about this idea that that um you know that that society that that societal consensus and laws um you know have no meaning okay I mean it, it, the societies there have always been selfish people who do really wrong things that hurt people yeah, yeah they have a habit of getting elected unfortunately <laughs> a lot of times they're politicians yeah, and, and that does not mean and it's not and it's generally not uh, agreed that. It's okay to go ahead and terminate someone else's life because they've threatened your finances or your liberty, okay? I mean, these well, issues are always but as, but as Hold on. That's, are you telling me that you wouldn't shoot somebody who was threatening to kidnap you? I would shoot a, lo- a, lo- a rogue lone gunman. Oh, somebody who didn't officer. have enough firepower. Once again, we're even back to if, Mike Makes Right. Even if I were unjustly, even if I were unjustly apprehended by the police, I would submit... And then, and, and, and the yeah, rocket's so red glare. Glenn, just because, thank you for the call tonight, appreciate it, but just because you have a religious belief in the idea of badges and elections and men with robes and chads and counting and all of this nonsense that uh, these trappings of government that we're so familiar with, just because you have this belief system does not make kidnapping not kidnapping. And, and I would also point out that, I mean, he's talking about society coming to consensus on things, and I'd say there's anything but. I mean, the <laughs> vast me the majority contract. of people in America don't think that marijuana should be illegal, and the ones, even the ones who do, a lot of them think that the penalties for are completely out of control and we still have those laws these things are piled on from centuries of people going and getting elected and then going to office and doing things completely against the consensus of the society even against their own rules in a lot of cases exactly the constitution so, but i used to have glenn's opinion i mean i really did yeah. and it's been you know just time and un- beginning to understand these philosophies, I think he's right. Subjectivity, uh, you know, equivocation, that's what it's about. But I, you have to be – if you want a principle to have uh, a foundation, if you want it to have meaning, it has to apply in other circumstances. So you have to pick the principle up. You have to fit it in other holes and see if it works. And the fact is the state is an organization that claims for itself on the monopoly privilege or the use of violence in a given geographic area. If that was any other organization but an organization that flew a flag out in front of their office, you would call them an armed gang. Armed yep. gangs we do not call justified. But Therefore, I simply can't call the state we, justified. We were talking to Akko earlier. Earlier, and I mean, Boko Haram could quite easily become the government of Cameroon. That's what ISIS is In many to countries, do. that's essentially what's happened throughout human history. It has been the guy with the most people that has been able to kill their way to the top. This country fought its way free from a king. It's kidnapping while they kill their way to the top, but as soon as they get on top, then it's completely fine. Society, I mean. Signatures yep. on the social, con- oh, social wait, no, contract. Oh, that doesn't exist. Oh, we'll change the provisions of the social contract when we like, and you're free. Trust me.
855-450 free. Mark, you uh, were calling out Chris Cantwell during one of the breaks, and I want you to do it on the air. When we continue here in moments, this is Free Talk Live. You ever hear about Ghost 80% AR-15 rifle kits? At Guns80.com, they are the 80% specialists, helping to protect our privacy. Look, there are forces out there right now trying to register guns for future confiscation. UN treaties threatening our Second Amendment, our freedom. You need a Ghost AR-15. Get it at Guns80.com. Call 844-2-GUNS-80. That's 844-248-6780. Own an AR-15 today and keep it a secret. Go to Guns80.com. That's Guns80.com. 844-2-GUNS-80. Worried about getting sick and feeling terrible for days or even weeks? You need Immudine for a healthy immune system. Why get sick and bother with products that just don't work? For just a dollar a day, Immudine is all natural and safe for all lifestyles. Call 866-257-8668 to buy now before it's too late, before you get sick. Or go to immudyne.com, immudine.com, or call 866-257-8668. Shortly after posting for the 10,000th time on his Twitter account earlier today, despite only ever accumulating 15 followers, local man Aaron Gartner announced he's about ready to quit the popular microblogging site. Well, I opened my account about two years ago and tweeted pretty much every day since, and it didn't really turn out like I expected. I thought, you know, once I hit 8,000 tweets, I could get some traction, start getting more followers, but it never really happened. I mean, I gave it my best shot, I guess. But I think I'm about done here. He has yet to be followed by anyone beyond a handful of friends, family members, and seemingly inactive accounts. This one time I tweeted out a pretty good joke about how out of control Lindsay Lohan is, and it actually got me a retweet. It was from this guy in Argentina I don't know, uh, who doesn't have any followers, and he's not following anyone else. Oh, hold on a sec. Apparently my aunt's following me now. Cool. This is the Onion News Network. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Mark got his panties in the wad during one of the breaks here, and uh, 
with Chris Cantwell, and we'll have him explain himself in a moment. Uh, but first, your calls and thoughts, 855-450-FREE, and join us online at freetalklive.com. Join us in real life at Liberty Forum 2015. It's coming up March 5th through the 8th. That's going to be here before you know it. you got about one month until Liberty Forum. You can get free t- a free ticket, you, if you register a hotel room for three nights with code LF2015. You register your hotel room for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night during Liberty Forum, March 5th through the 8th. And then email me with your registration information. So just, you know, forward me whatever the hotel sends you uh, or forward me the details like the reservation number. And then I'll send that along to the organizer of Liberty Forum, and they will register a ticket in your name. Free admission to the New Hampshire Liberty Forum, one of the best events that you can attend from a liberty-oriented perspective. Great speakers. Patrick Byrne from Overstock.com. Ben Swan is going to be speaking this year. Jeffrey Tucker is back, of course, at Liberty Forum. So many different uh, speakers. I can't name them all. You can go and see them for yourself at nhlibertyforum.com. And again, use code LF2015 when you reserve your room. Then email me the reservation details. I'll get you that free ticket to the Liberty Forum. They need your email address to do that. That's correct. Anand is on the line here with us uh, in New York. Anand, you're on Free Talk Live. Oh, hello. I'm back again. Welcome back. Hi, Anand. Uh, go ahead with your thoughts. Uh, so with regarding the recent ISIS burning video, I, it's particularly difficult for me because Oftentimes you hear libert- people say about libertarians, say, oh, libertarians want nothing to be done regarding ISIS because they don't support the next U.S. government war or something. And when I explain to this one person who's the one person regarding that, in a libertarian view, the private people, the people would rise up against ISIS rather than the government going against ISIS, and they would use self-defense against this terrorist group. And right. ISIS wouldn't get very far in New Hampshire no, uh, because people are able to carry weapons, carry carry them openly, yeah, and yeah. concealed carry is yeah. relatively simple. Also, I support the right of free people to be able to cross the borders of free countries freely. I suspect there's a lot of people who are in the realm of ISIS that would like to just leave. At the very least, just let us leave. And mm. uh, Okay. Yeah. And they sure. should be able to come I here. Wonder. Yeah, I wanted to continue, and then this one person, then the person I was talking to said, I'm worth an Obama because at least Obama wants something to be done, and I don't want something to be done as if... <laughs> now, was the person you, you were talking to a person. conservative? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Well, only a libertarian can be worse than a liberal. Right. <laughs> to a conservative. <laughs> And better, right? Like, so much better. <laughs> Only a libertarian can be more conservative and more liberal than uh, the average person can handle. Here's a suggestion. Uh, leave New York as soon as uh, you humanly possibly <laughs> can leave New York and get uh, to New oh, Hampshire. By the way, I'm, I'm 16, actually. I'm 16 and have a really deep voice. Yeah, I mean, you're going to be 18 soon enough. It'll be here before you know it. I mean, I, I understand that being 16 means you, to some extent, are under the control of uh, two strangers into which you were born. Uh, Save your pennies now, and that's a ridiculous thing to say. Well, you are born into strangers, right? I mean, you don't know who you, those people you, are. I'm sure he's grown to love, uh, know and love them. I don't know. Do you, Anand? Yeah, yeah they're that's my good. parents, actually. Yeah. Good on you. He's a ridiculous, insane Call into Stefan Molyneux and have him convince you that you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Anand, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, there's more coming up. 855-450-FREE. I'd love to talk about that video. I don't know if y'all have seen it. We don't have time for it tonight because we've got other things to discuss, but the uh, the burning video, the guy being burned alive. I haven't alive. Uh, seen it. I saw the headline on Google News. So. I only saw the picture of it. I didn't particularly want to go see a man get torched. I did watch it. Um, anyway, let's move on because we did have other things to talk about. Yeah. We can talk about that another night. Mark, what so, were you calling Chris Cantwell on yeah, for? Yeah, what was the caller's break? name? Glenn. 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 When Glenn was on uh, Cantwell, you had... See, you don't even know the guy's name. I'm at least paying attention <laughs> yeah, to it. I appreciate that. I should write it down. Uh, when Glenn was on, you did the, um, as you've done a, f- a few times, the, hey, we get the microphones and you suck thing. And, uh, you know, I, here on Free Talk Live, it's true. I'm not claiming what you're saying isn't true. We do have the microphones, and this is sort of private property, as it were. And um, But... We invite people to come. We call it Free Talk Live, and we say that, uh, you know, you you can call in and bring up whatever you want. Glenn and take call control in. of the airwaves. We, we used to say contr- take even take control of the airwaves. We say that still. We still say that. Uh, he, he, Glenn did that. He brought up his topic. What he was, the was one very thing- loud and obnoxious and angry, and he went up against Chris Cantwell, who is very loud and obnoxious and angry. <laughs> I mean, you call into Free Talk Live on Wednesday night, you're going to go up against Chris Cantwell. I if only you, want if you're going to be an a-hole, right. you're going to get it back tenfold. I only want Cantwell to be right. 
right, and I suggest that uh, that I- I'm suggesting that we do away with the uh, th- with your you know shtick where hey, this is our radio show because we say you know it you control the show. No, well, we don't say that. I would I would uh, and look if that's an instruction from my employers here, I'm happy it's to not, to yeah, follow it's not, it. It's not an instruction, but, from, but no. I would I would say I mean look when people call into some garbage podcast, I demand of them to improve my show. I will curse them out and I will hang up on them and treat them like garbage. <laughs> the thing is, you don't get to don't. hang up on people here. You're not in control of the phones. Exactly. You're just sitting there on a microphone. Exactly. And the thing is, like as you, as you pointed out, the reality of it is, is that we will talk over a, a, somebody who tries to talk over us loses, right? I feel like I'm doing Glenn a favor when I try to remind him that, hey, you're talking and I'm right. talking. Guess Settle what? Down. Nobody's hearing what you're saying. I'm trying to do you a favor here, pal. You want to make a point. Well, then you better work it into the course of a conversation because we will dominate that phone call. There's no two ways about I it. I have the hold button here. I can put anybody on hold any time, and we've done that before a number of times, Mark, and you never jump down my throat for it. No, when I somebody starts talking and I don't over feel top like, of it. I don't feel like Mark jumped down my throat. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a I'm not saying of, he was mean to you know, about it. He critique. was very nice. I'm uh, I'm sort of ginning it up a little bit yep. for, uh, right. for the discussion we're having. But it was important enough to him to speak to you during a break. And what I'm saying is he didn't do that. He's never done that to me. You know, when somebody has called in and has been very, very loud while we're trying to have a conversation, if there was some caller talking incessantly underneath when one of us was trying to talk, it's not uncommon for me to say, okay, you're on hold. That way the host can continue speaking. But then again, you probably don't like hammer home the point. Of ha ha ha! I'm well, going yeah, to you hammered it home. home. That's true. I, right. I, I that's did it a Chris, little different. Chris Cantwell. I mean, yeah. that's just you know part so, of the show. Okay, so I would claim that the reality is, and I did. Like that was the first thing that came out of my mouth. Absolutely, the reality yeah. is, is that Free Talk Live is our show. Most specifically, the programming of Free Talk Live, the the, the stuff that goes on during the show as opposed to the ads, is Ian's show. Um, sometimes, or whoever's in the first chair. If you're yeah, in the first chair, it, no, no, it's your show. You let them sit in the first chair. Okay, so. It's Ian's show. Um, now the ads are mine, but the the show's Ian's. The on the other hand, um, you what you don't do from a branding standpoint, what you'll say, and it's what important what you say. What you'll say is is call in, uh, bring up what you want. It's your show. You know those kind of things. The the things that are sort of opposite of it's Ian's show, and what I'm saying is is let's get consistent branding on board here. As the advertising I'm not specialist, being inconsistent. I'm not, I, and, and, I, and, I'll, and I've and I've remarked on the air before. It's free talk live, and these people should really understand it when they call in. I don't know how many of them are listening to other talk shows. Most talk radio shows are not going to allow you the leeway that free talk live nope, does, period. even they when sure I'm on, even when I'm here and ready to jump down your throat and tell you off and talk over you. You're still getting a lot more leeway than you're going to get on Mark Levin or Rush Limbaugh or Andrew Wilkow or, or some any, garbage podcast or some garbage podcast. Certainly, <laughs> I'll curse you out. And hang up on you and get, curse your mother to get cancer. Yeah. I'm a terrible person on some garbage <laughs> podcast. Um, but even with me doing that, you're getting so much leeway on this show, and it's amazing the tolerance understand. that we have. Yeah, no. But we have to put on an entertaining program, and this is not – if people want to listen to you, they go to blogtalkradio.com yeah. and listen to a million talentless idiots bloviate over the telephone. I don't think it's wrong to make that crystal clear, and I think that's all you really did. Now, you did it in a way that was abrasive and harsh, and that's kind Chris of my Cantwell. Ammo, yeah. That's what Chris Cantwell does. So, Mark, you can't ask Chris Cantwell to not be Chris Cantwell when he's on – on Free Talk Live. He's already stopped cursing, okay? Leave the guy alone. That's an extraordinary feat for me, by the way. It's yeah, been... you haven't had a mess up yet. He I has only cursed fewer one... times than you have on I, the show, Mark. I, we, we had one time that you had to hit the dump button because I said GD on the air, and I didn't even uh, know that that yeah, was like a big an, no-no. That's, that's, that's one. it. And then there was the one thing where I talked about a rubber girlfriend of mine, and then somebody complained, radius, but that wasn't one of the even radio the dump stations button. You know? like that one very much. Toll-free number is 855-453. Okay, net neutrality is it's looming on the horizon. Is this thing a done deal? We can talk about that on the way. That's they're rubber phobic, <laughs> and uh, they're, they're discriminating against you. Really? It My sexual tough. preferences aren't owed the same respect as anybody else's. Get out of here. It's tough to talk about <laughs> sex topics on conservative radio stations, and we're on some of those stations, so inevitably you're going to rub people the wrong way. Although you like <laughs> no to pun rub intended. the right way. <laughs> Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. 
Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System system today complete with two black berkey elements for only 231 dollars and the berkey guy will ship your order free of charge with the purchase of a berkey light the berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only 39.99 that's over 30 percent off the retail price call the berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653 that's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com that's goberkey.com today Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Stouffer's, helping bring your family together with wholesome dinner options, even on the busiest of nights. Find dinner table ideas to bring your family together at letsfixdinner.com. To get kids involved in dinnertime conversation, ask specific questions, not broad ones. Instead of what happened today at school, try what was the best thing that happened today. The more specific you are, the more they'll have to say. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain uh, right here on this program. But, of course, we do it seven nights a week. You can always join us online between now and the next live show at freetalklive.com. You can join Chris Cantwell on his website, christophercantwell.com. You're you're cranking out the posts these days, Chris. Is it like once a day? It seems like it. It's I try to do at least once a day. Wow. You know, if I if I can get into, I will get into. But a lot of the time, usually it, it takes me the most of the day to to crank out a post. Even if it's a pretty short one, I do try to put a lot of thought into it and get them out there. But every pretty much every single day, 
Uh, if you sign up for my email list at ChristopherCantwell.com slash subscribe, you will get an email from me pretty much every day with a new mm. post or just bookmark it and go right to the front page and you see what's fresh. ChristopherCantwell.com, his site. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. So you've been following the net neutrality case. And Mark, I know you wanted to talk about vaccines. We've run out of time on that yeah, one, out. but you're hot on that. Maybe tomorrow night would be a good time for it. Uh, but Chris, and, and I and I think it's a great topic, and I'm sorry, but the, the, the net neutrality thing I think is really imminent and it's important. This came out today. The FCC chairman is pro- making us serious move toward yeah, this. So this is an editorial. I'm reading the article on Wired, but this was syndicated all over the place, and and I can't obviously don't have time to read the whole thing. Yeah, I wanna, let's get a taste. I want to I want to get into one thing. So he says, I personally learned the importance of open networks the hard way. In the mid 1980s, I was president of a startup, Nabu, the home computer network. My company was using new technology to deliver high speed data to home computers over cable television lines across the town. Steve Case was starting what became AOL. Nabu was delivering service at then blazing speed of 1.5 megabits per second, hundreds of times uh, the speed. And he said that uh, Case uh, later came to tell him that AOL was worried about his service. Mm -hmm. Now, what uh, this is too long to read in the moments that we have remaining, but he says that basically because he did not have access, he could not force the cable companies to give him access to their lines, he went out of business. And because he went out of business, now, this is evidence that he has to take over the communications of the entire United right. States through the FCC and and dictate how other people do business. And another thing that he brought up, and it's the same thing Kit Walsh said when, when we had Kit on the show uh, from the Electronic Frontier Foundation, was basically that the FCC created the modern Internet because they forced... AT&T to allow other people to put equipment on their network and that without the FCC doing this, we wouldn't have any of these things that we have today. This infuriates me because people don't understand that this is all economics, right? They're they're talking about, well, we did this and without that, you never would have, you know, but it doesn't take into account all the different motivations and and, and, uh, influences that happen in in an economy, right? So look at, look at, what we have in the history of communications. We had wireless communications before we had wired communications, right? Like there was radio and mm-hmm. television before there was like telephones, I'm pretty sure, right? Or am I, I think I'm, I think I'm right Radio's about that. an old technology, that's for sure. Okay, so you had wireless communications, TV and radio, okay? And then the FCC got involved, regulated it, licensed things and whatnot, and then it became, because it, at the time when you were first doing radio, it didn't make sense to run wires everywhere, right? So then the FCC comes in and the FCC regulates the airwaves, and all of a sudden, it makes more sense to run wires across Cable the country, TV. Yeah. creating yeah. copper wiring 80s. across a nation becomes cheaper than dealing with the Federal Communications Commission. And then you have cable and you have all of these things. Now, the, the, the Federal Communications Commission wants to come in and mess around with your wires. And then all of a sudden, we've got cell phones because people are trying to get around the regulations of the Federal Communications Commission. Uh, cell phones are regulated, too, now. And in fact, for what I've, FM broadca- from, uh, transmitters. Right. From what I've read in the past, had it not been for the FCC, we could have had cell phones in the 60s. Right. So the whole entire thing is here, like, we can't create a radio station here in Keene, New Hampshire. We've got a radio program that's on 150 plus broadcast stations across the United States, and we can't start our own radio station because of the FCC. And so what do we do? We connect it to the internet, put it all out there. Right? That's right. But the, the, the fact of the matter is that if you, if, if the FCC did not regulate AT&T back in the 1960s, what would have happened is competitive uh, cooperative networks would have eventually emerge, right? Because cooperative networks obviously have great benefits. People figure things out over time, and while the FCC might have created a situation where open networks came into existence sooner, what they actually did was disincentivize innovation because yep. they would have they worked around the solution. It. And same thing yeah. with uh, so Picked many right, so many different uh, examples. Like when, in radio, where we're at right now, there's some stations that are carrying us in HD, as it's called, which is really kind of the same situation all over again on a more kind of smaller scale, a right. less important scale. HD technology was selected as the winner by the FCC instead of these other competing technologies that exist. And in other countries, they have these other technologies. The FCC decided, well, 
well, this is the one we're going to have here. And so we're stuck with it. And HD, as a result, is garbage. It's just a, it's a, it's not a good standard at all. It's not what it could have been. It's not even as good as some of the competitors out there. But that's what we're stuck with. And so radio stations have poured money into this, and they've got no return on investment. Had we actually had an open marketplace for different digital broadcast types, maybe we'd have some innovation and we'd have some people trying new things. So what the arguments I hear from you guys are, well, if the federal government hadn't got involved decades ago in this area or that area, um, that things would be different. And that's a pretty obvious statement. And I would have to agree with you that we'd be in a better circumstance when it came to the internet and access. Well, we think it would be better, but he wants you to believe, this FCC chairman, that things would be terrible. It's I nauseating agree. what he says in the beginning. It's just like, we're making this huge power grab over the internet. Protect your freedom of speech. Sure. Oh, it's all about you and free speech. And yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Let's give the government more control. That'll work out really well. We had Kit, uh, is Kit, right? Mm -hmm. We had Kit from the Electronic Freedom Foundation, Frontier Foundation on the show uh, a couple of weeks ago with uh, Cantwell on here. And uh, what I found was that Kit made a pretty good argument for what they had to do now. Even the, I mean, what we live in a world where all the mistakes have already been made. We can't undo the decades worth of problems. That's not a foreseeable or likely solution to problems today. What the Electronic Frontier Foundation has said is, is that here's the solution is to, uh, you know, classify broadband as type uh, two. Title two. Title yeah. two. I'm sorry. Title two. Um, just like uh, uh, just and like, take more control away from internet providers and put more control in the hands of the government. The, the, the really argument that you're making is the same thing that Akko said about the United States invading Africa in order to deal with Boko Haram. You're saying like, okay, well, look, it'd be better if there were no governments everywhere and we lived in this voluntary society. But since we don't, we have to have the United States military combat this, this threat mm -hmm. to our safety. It's the same exact thing. And I understand the temptation to do it. Believe me, I do. In the immediate future, you'll probably get some kind of improvement in competition as a result of net neutrality. No question about it. But I am watching this government take over every little aspect of everything in this economy and throughout the world, and this is one more step on the path to it. And when I see people cheering for it who, who are ordinary liberty-minded people or it's even sick. entertaining it— scares the life out right. of me. You either have principles or you don't. And the principal position on this is to not support more government involvement in the internet. No, thank you. Okay. They're not going to help. We could have, it, if, if the FCC came in and said, well, look, Facebook, uh, look, has been censoring uh, certain personalities and dampening their posts in an attempt to get advertising revenue out of them. If the FCC came to Facebook and said, you have to stop using your edge rank system. You have mm. to stop trying to extract money out of Christopher Cantwell and Free Talk Live. That would, in the immediate future, benefit both of us. But it would create a ter terrifying situation for the future that the government's now controlling what's in your news feed and all of that, and it's oh just my God. not you good. Know, that's a great way to boil this down, I think, and possibly look at where this could go. Because when whenever the government you know sticks its nose under the tent, uh, the camel's nose under the tent, so to speak, the rest of that's coming the, in at some point. And the what camel's Chris, in the in the damn tent already, Ian. We're just questioning. Get him out. We're just yeah. talking about you which can, direction you can, you can face you can, the camel. You can stop allowing it to come in and. Uh, you, you, the people who are arguing for net neutrality, who are arguing for more intervention, are arguing for less freedom in the long run. And I think your analogy is perfect in that if the government is allowed to set these rules for the internet connections, why wouldn't they be allowed to set the same rule for someone who's using that connection, like Facebook? Well, now all of a sudden there has to be Facebook neutrality. Exactly, and and it's and it's a thing that Facebook, as I've said to uh, as I said to Kit Walsh, and I had Corinne McSherry on Facebook's on, a right, on Chris. my show. It's a right, right, exactly. That's what these people are looking at it as, and it's like, look, at some point you've got to say that somebody owns something, and and when you when you create these situations, um, the, the the fact of the matter is that we could have high speed gigabit plus per second wireless access speeds right now, and the FCC is preventing that from happening. People like. 
their internet content controlled to some extent. That's why Facebook is the most popular social network because they're doing How do we have gigabyte uh, internet access that the FCC is the, preventing? The, there is already Wi-Fi already. The technology already exists for 1.3 gigabit per second Wi-Fi. The FCC regulates our antenna height, our antenna size, our antenna type, and the wattage rate. of the radios. Yeah. We can do this tomorrow. We could give Keen 1.3 gigabit per second wireless internet access if not for the FCC. Out of time for tonight. Chris, you nailed it. Thanks, Thank man. You. ChristopherCantwell.com. And we'll see you tomorrow night. Online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. That's uh, That's been a great show. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Hey, I'm Ian Freeman, one of the hosts of Free Talk Live. I created Free Talk Live in 2002 as an alternative to traditional talk radio. I wanted a show where anyone could call in and bring up any topic without fear of being screened out. Combined with our libertarian, voluntarist viewpoints, Free Talk Live is a unique syndicated radio show heard on FM and AM radio stations, coast to coast and beyond. I moved from my birthplace of Florida to New Hampshire in 2006 as part of the Free State Project, I'm also the program director of LRN.FM, which I launched in 2009 to create a place to present the best liberty-oriented audio programs from around the globe. I perform liberty outreach of all sorts and have done civil disobedience, non-cooperation, and run for office multiple times. Much of that's covered on my blog at freekeen.com. Thank you for listening to our shows. And if you want to support our work, please visit amp.freetalklive.com and contribute just $5 a month to our effective liberty outreach. That's amp dot free talk live dot com are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like then this free ebook may save your life rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches informers informants agents provocateur narcs finks and similar vermin rats was written by og libertarian claire wolf rats is a short book easy to read and available free in many formats download rats free at rats no snitch.com that's rats no snitch.com you can listen to free talk live on the radio podcast satellite webcam and our live streams but did you know you can listen to free talk live from any phone anywhere add this number to your phone 213-493-0308 it's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. You're listening to The Liberty Beat, your daily source for liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. John Bush here with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, February 4th, 2015. Gold is trading around $1,260, silver around $17.27, and Bitcoin is trading around $228. Today's metals prices are brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. The New York City courtroom hosting the Ross Ulbrich trial was filled with tension Tuesday afternoon as Judge Catherine Forrest shut down more witnesses and arguments from Ross Ulbricht's defense in the Silk Road trial. On day 11 of the trial, the defense and prosecution gave their closing statements, and the jury prepared to deliberate. The prosecution told the jury that the defense was attempting to cloud their minds by fabricating a conspiracy theory surrounding Ross Ulbricht. Defense attorney Joshua Dreytel told the jury that the government lacked conclusive evidence to link Ross Ulbricht to the Silk Road and the purchase of large amounts of drugs. Ulbricht is facing seven counts of conspiracy. Wednesday morning, Judge Forrest will instruct the jurors on the law, and the deliberation process will begin. Liberty Beat reporter Derek Rose will be live in the courtroom reporting throughout the day. Copwatch activists in Stockton, California, are launching a crowdfunding effort to root out corrupt and violent police officers. The activists are offering $2,500 to anyone who submits information leading to the arrest or termination of violent cops. A flyer for the campaign lists 15 officers to look out for and includes a picture of 10 cops accused of brutalizing or killing Americans. 
Stockton Police Chief Eric Jones stated he is concerned that the flyer might be intended to put officers at risk and said he thought it was sad and disheartening to see a flyer like this with a $2,500 bounty. Indigenous communities in the Peruvian Amazon continue to fight against oil contamination caused by state projects. Men, women, and children with the Quichua have blocked oil company boats from passing through the River Tiger for almost a month now. The local communities say the companies are polluting the river and they will no longer allow the companies to operate. Quichua leader Jose Fachin has said the communities are ready to die defending the river. Communities are asking for remediation, compensation, and to be consulted on future projects. Support for the Liberty Beat Silk Road coverage comes from Bitcoinism.liberty.me. Thoughts on Bitcoin and the future digital economy. Check out the blog at Bitcoinism.liberty.me. Support for our Silk Road coverage also comes from the Free State Project. Want to find liberty in your lifetime? Join thousands of others who are making the move to New Hampshire, the freest state in the Union. To learn more or to pledge to move today, visit freestateproject.org. An investigator has revealed that a prominent prosecutor in Argentina who recently died under mysterious circumstances had drafted a request for President Cristina Fernandez to be arrested under conspiracy charges. Alberto Nieves.